Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Today we have a very special episode for you, a compilation of some of the greatest Entitled Parent Stories we read over the past year. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a few hours of the most Entitled Parents you've ever heard of. And by the way, Karen assured me that if this video gets 1000 likes, she won't try to speak to anyone's manager for an entire week. So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. And become an official member of the ReArmy today, and I'll give you a shout out in an upcoming video. R slash Entitled Parents. I quickly hop into Entitled Mom's yard to pick up my football, and she goes crazy and calls the police because I stole her baby's toy. On mobile, and English isn't my first language, so I will make a lot of spelling mistakes. So this story might be a little long. I don't know what you find long, and I tried to mostly capture the conversations. I forgot a few things, so I just made it like how I remembered it the most. Too long didn't read at the bottom. This happened not too long ago, and some backstory. I have a medium-sized yard, and the fence between our and our neighbor's yards isn't very big. It's pretty easy to just hop over. Cast, we've got me, OP, mortal Ender dragon. We've got brother, my little brother, my mom. We've got the entitled mother, who is the entitled neighbor. We've got the neighbor's son. We've got police officer one and police officer two. So, sometime back I was playing football, soccer, with my brother in our yard. Then I accidentally kicked the ball over the fence into my neighbor's yard. The fence isn't that high, so I just hop over it. I see the ball lying on the ground like a few meters away, so I just pick it up and walk back. But that's when Entitled Mom comes in. Apparently, Entitled Kid saw me and called Entitled Mom. What are you doing in my yard? I was just picking up my football. You disturbed my precious baby. Note, I'm not good at guessing ages, but he was at least six years old. Leave my baby's toy here, you thief! Pointing at my ball. But it's my ball. It was in my yard, so it belongs to my baby now. You are too old for that anyway. I was playing with my little brother. No excuses. Leave that ball here, or I'm calling the police. Calling the police? For what? Because I picked up my ball that accidentally got into your yard? Stop screaming! You are being a bad example for my baby! But we were just minding our own business. That's it! I'm calling the police! Then she goes back into her house and takes her son with her. I go back into my yard, give the ball to my brother, and tell everything to my mom. She gets mad. Not much later, the door rings. My mom opens the door. My mom opens the door and there are two police officers and the entitled mom with her son. I thought she was just bluffing, but she actually called the police. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you tell me what happened? I already told you what happened. He was trespassing. Calm down, ma'am. We'll take it from here. My mom tells me what happened while me and my brother watch back. Liar. She is lying. Her kid was harassing my baby. What do you mean, Mom? OP didn't do anything to me. Calm down, sweetie. You go back inside. Mommy will take care of this. Is it true what he said, ma'am? No, he is still in shock from what happened. <laughs> he doesn't look really shocked to me. Well, he is. Now, what are you waiting for? Arrest that little jerk and her little brat. My mom was like, what did you just call me and my son? How dare you talk to me like that? Calm down, the both of you. So your son accidentally kicked his ball over the fence and hopped over to pick it up. Yes, that is exactly what happened. She is lying. Don't listen to her. Her little brat infiltrated my yard, stole my baby's toy, and harassed him. And he is being a bad example for my baby. I want them banned from this city immediately. I was expecting what was going to happen, so I quietly told my brother to get the ball from our yard. He came back very quickly with the ball. I showed it to my mom, and she already knew why I brought it here. Police Officer 1 sees it too and asks, Well, do you have any proof that it is your property? 
Before Entitled Mom could say anything, my mom gave the ball to Police Officer 1. Ma'am, his name is clearly on it. Lies! He quickly just wrote his name on it. It couldn't have been recent. It's already a bit rubbed off. They planned all of this. Filthy thieves! My mom quickly opened her phone and went to her photo gallery and showed them a not too old photo of me and my brother playing soccer. And the ball on the picture was the same yellow ball as the one police officer two was holding right now. And then neighbor's son came back outside. Sweetie, what are you doing outside? I told you to stay inside. It's too dangerous out here with criminals like this brat who tried to hurt you. But mom, he didn't do anything to me. I saw a ball flying over the garden and he just came to pick it up. He didn't touch me. Also, mom, I'm very hungry. You told me you would make dinner by 6 p.m. Go back inside. Mom is trying to get you your toy back. But I don't even like soccer. I don't even want a ball. I'm just very hungry. Go back inside now, or you'll go to bed with no food. Neighbor son runs back inside, crying and saying that he's hungry. Everyone was a bit shocked. All right, ma'am. I'm going to have to ask you to come with us. You can't tell me what to do. Police officer one takes entitled mom with him to the car. Sorry about the inconvenience. It's no big deal. Thank you for taking her away. She was getting on my nerves. Police officer one rides away while police officer two watches neighbor's son for a bit until his dad came home. Me and my mom go back in and me and my brother continue playing soccer and we tried to kick the ball as high up as possible, causing the ball to land into Entitled Mom's yard very often. Then we raced and tried to catch it as quick as possible, since Entitled Mom wasn't there. We kept doing this for a while because it was much fun. Yes, we kind of abused it, but we don't do it anymore. I don't know what happened to the neighbor, but she didn't complain anymore. Next we've got, Entitled Mom wants me to do her work because I do it for an elderly lady. This is my first post in this sub, and I hope it won't be too long. Background. Me and my significant other live in a seven apartment block. We lived here since 2011 and saw a bunch of neighbors come and go. We both work on four shifts in different companies, which means we work on Saturdays and Sundays, but we have all our free time together. The block is in the old town of our home city, which means tight roads and sometimes bad smells. In my home country, there is a law that every house owner has to shovel snow in front of their house or apartment off the sidewalk because if someone slips on your sidewalk, this can be serious trouble for you. Our landlord made an agreement with us. We are seven apartments and in the winter months when it's freezing on each day of the week, one of the residents has to shovel snow from the sidewalk. Since we moved in, it worked mostly out. One of our residents here is a nice elderly lady, which is very nice, sweet, but also pretty sick. Because of her condition, she couldn't keep up over years with the agreement. So being a nice guy, I offered to take her part as well. She offered me money for compensation, which I refused. I didn't do it for the money. But when she is baking something, she always brings us a cake or cookies. Because of the shift, I do it in the early morning, before morning and late shift, or after night shift when I return home. This worked well for the last five to six years and there was no problem. Until last year. Enter Entitled Mom, her husband and her two kids. They moved into the apartment next to us last year in August. Well, the kids can be loud sometimes, which is okay because you know, kids. Entitled Mom and her husband on the other hand, well, I met the husband only two to three times since they moved in and he was drunk all the times and wore joggings. I met the entitled mom a few times too, and she always looked down at me, like I was something lower than her. From what I know about them, they both don't work, because they are either at home or at some pub or cafe while their kids are at school. Sorry for the long background, onto the story. This happened last year in the middle of December. Pretty lame I know, but entitled mom must have watched me for some time. This is important later. I just came home from my last night shift around 7am Sunday morning. This is important because in the last night shift, we have to clean our machines and it's pretty rough if you're alone. We are a two people team usually. I was alone the whole shift and had to do the cleaning alone. My significant other texted me that she was doing some overtime, so I had the bed for me alone. I only wanted to sleep and headed right for my apartment. 
I go inside, undress, shower, and went straight to bed. About one hour later, just as I was in a good sleep, I hear my doorbell ring. Still sleepy, I slip into some pants and open the door. For our cast, we've got the entitled mother, the landlord, and me. Entitled mom stands in front of me, tapping with her foot, arms crossed and a sour look on her face. Good morning, can I help you? I hate being woken up, but still try to be polite. Entitled mom in a demanding voice. Why haven't you shoveled the snow off the sidewalk? It took a second for me to know what she meant. To prevent this kind of arguing, the landlord sets up the days for each resident on which day they had to do it. He would circle around every year so residents didn't do same days over and over. Because I did it for a nice elderly lady as well, I had been assigned Tuesday and Friday. The list gets put on the blackboard in the block entrance. Also to point out, Sunday was entitled Mom's Day. I have Tuesday this year, not Sunday. So what? I saw you do it on Friday too instead of nice elderly lady. That's because she's old, sick, and can't do it anymore on her own. So what? One more day won't hurt you. Look, I had a hard night shift and want to sleep. If you won't do it, ask your husband. No, you will do it because we want to head out with the kids and have no time for that. So you will do it. At this point, I had enough, but I had an ace up my sleeve. All right, have fun. Boy, you should have seen the smug smile on her face when she left and thought I would comply. <laughs> yeah, right. I waited a few minutes before she, her husband, and the kids left the building. I closed the door and went back to bed. About five hours later, and after my significant other came home and went to bed, I was already awake. My doorbell rang again. Lo and behold, our landlord was outside my door. He checks every day if we shovel the snow on the sidewalk. Good morning, did I wake you? My landlord knows me and my significant other very well and that we work on four shifts. No, don't worry, I I've already been awake. Good. Say, you don't happen to know where Entitled Mom and her family are? Nope, no idea. Haven't seen them in a while. Well, it's their turn to shovel snow. They haven't done it, have they? No, they haven't. Well, I got home from night shift and was sleeping. The landlord looked at me with one eyebrow raised. Well, he isn't stupid. I'll take care of it, don't worry. He smiled, we shook hands and parted ways. Two weeks later, I had the same night shift again. As I came home, I saw entitled mom shoveling snow. I walked by, smugged and pointed at the sidewalk. You missed a spot there, and walked inside. I could hear her ranting and dropping the shovel. Never felt so satisfied. Next we've got Entitled Mom demands that we change our attention to her and her kid. So this happened at a place I used to work at. The place is similar style to Subway, but it has much better food and is much higher quality. A little backstory. We were expecting a party of around 50 people into the restaurant, so we were going to have an exhausting day ahead of us. So you know where this will go. Story. I had just come back from a delivery and put on my apron to start working again. I was in the prep room, basically where everything is prepared to be served, and I was just getting ready for the huge party by getting out whatever we were short of. The party arrived. My manager called out, Here they come! And that's when I knew it was going to be heck out there. I start getting everything ready and chopping up onions, tomatoes, etc., and whatever we were short of already. After 30 or so minutes, about half of the party had been served. I'm done with all the prepping, so I decide that the tables need to be cleaned because no one that's out front could do it. I get all the cleaning stuff and start wiping down some of the inside tables. We have outside ones, but no one ever used them, or at least when I was working. I get done with my first table, and I'm about to start the second, and I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around and see Entitled Mom and her Entitled Kid, about 12-ish hovering over me. I was kneeling down because I was getting the cleaners and the towel. If you need a table cleaned, I can do it right now if you want. I stand up. I don't need a table cleaned. I want to be served right now. She said in a very condescending tone, like I'm the one who caused all this. Well, as you can see, there's over 20 people. About how many people were left in the party who haven't ordered. In front of you waiting to be served and I can't do anything about it. 
I want them to step aside and let me order first, and I don't want to do that. She is so entitled that she doesn't even do her own dirty work. I can't do that, but you can ask them yourself. Entitled mom stomps on over to the line and is asking to cut in front of them. It doesn't work. While she was talking to them, the entitled kid stayed behind and I talked to him about football because he was wearing a Seahawks jersey. It was nice, until he said this. Your job is a piece of crap and I shouldn't take any advice from you. I gave him tips on how to spot fouls and stuff like that. I bet my mom could buy this whole establishment because she knows the owner. She doesn't. I don't deserve to talk to you. Now go away, poor man. I got angry, but before I could insult him back, his mom comes over. Did you have fun talking to this poor man? I'm getting even more angry. I loved putting him into place right where he belongs. Pause of silence. The poor. As he looks over at me with a deadly glare with a crap-eating grin on his face, I get even more angry and about to tear both the entitled kid and entitled mom's heads off, but have to prevent that to prevent me from causing a brawl. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but can you leave this establishment? You are causing an unwanted and an unnecessary scene. Perfect. Now they can serve me because they all have their eyes on me. Now has a smile like she just won the lottery. If you don't leave, then I might have the manager remove you from this establishment. This must have set her off. I know the person who owns this establishment, and I can get you fired. Ah, classic entitled parents. Do you even know his name? His name is, um, um, John, that's his name. It's not by the way, but we did have someone named John working there. Okay, then talk to my manager then, since you know his name. I'm trying not to burst into laughter on how this is going to fail. Entitled mom calls out for John, but gets no response because John wasn't working that day. So one of the other workers heard her screaming this, and they tell her that John is off today, and if this is an important matter, then you'll have to call him, so she requested his phone number. Our company's policy is that you can't give people's numbers to others, even if it's their friends or family. She gets mad and stomped over to me in anger. Give me his phone number so I can call him so he can fire you. I can't because my manager is working up front and you can see her now as I point where she is. That's not your manager. That's just some 18 year old trying to provide money for her poor family. Yes, she said that. Why do you think it's not her? I shouldn't have said this, but I did because curiosity. Because a woman shouldn't be a manager. Because they don't provide good role models for everyone else. Kind of ironic. And only a man should run an establishment because they would be nicer to its customers. I want to be served right now. I don't even know how someone can be like this. The manager finally walks over and asks what's the problem. She explains how I hurt her and threatened her to leave or else. And of course, the entitled kid agreed with everything and added a few things such as theft. He said I was trying to steal his phone because I was poor. My manager said, we have security cameras in the back room, so we can check if this is all true. The entitled mom gets super white, but stays calm and says this. She said in a very vulnerable voice. I just came to get some food for my starving child. The kid had Ray-Ban sunglasses, a Rolex, and had a really nice pair of Jordans. My anger got to me, finally overflowed, and it decided it didn't want to be contained. You are not poor. Just look at your son. I bet you could sell just his stuff that he is wearing and buy a small yacht. As for you, you are also not poor because look what you're wearing. You're wearing some glittery high heels that make your flat butt have some curve just to make your husband happy. Don't let me forget your Gucci handbag that I bet you've put your yapping little dog in just like you. Just so you can get attention because you're just some trophy wife that doesn't get enough attention at home so you only get it from starting trouble. Sit in your place, you insufferable lady. My manager asks me to go into his office. I thought I was going to be fired for that stunt. She finally gets the entitled mom and entitled kid out and comes back to her office. My manager tells me, I'm sorry for you, but all we will get is a bad review on Yelp or something. I thought you were going to fire me. 
No, everyone needs to get their anger out at someone, and I liked how you put her in her place. But let's get to finishing this party's order. I'll call you out if I need you, but just stay there for a moment to cool off. All that was going through my mind was that I'm going to get fired today and should start saying goodbye to everyone I worked with. The manager comes back. It was about 20 minutes or so, and I'm sweating bullets. We're done serving the party, and I want you to go home. I think you've been put through enough today. So you aren't going to fire me? Do you want to get fired? No, I'm just curious why you didn't. I don't want to lose you. You are a hard worker that doesn't complain about things and gets the job done. It would hurt the establishment if you were to go away. Also, it would hurt everyone here because they like you a lot. Have a great day and see you tomorrow. Same to you. I leave and I haven't seen her there up until I quit and even to this day. Thanks for reading and have a wonderful day. And our final story of the day. My entitled parent is a jerk father. What up? I've watched a lot of your videos and love the way Karen is always butting in with her annoyance. I got a story for you and I'm very, very new. So people, be gentle with me. My dad has always been entitled. I have autism in the middle of the scale, but that made me a victim to his bullying and harassment. Growing up, he's always put me down over the littlest things. I was singing in the church choir and I thought I sounded okay, but oh no. He thought I needed schooling because I wasn't able to hit a high note. Well, sorry for being nervous on stage, and that made me choke. He's done a lot of mean things to me and my siblings, but the worst was a couple of years after my parents divorced. It was Christmas time. I started getting really interested in my craft work and made a lot of things to give my family members. I made picture frames to look like their windows. Crude work, but I was young. They all loved them. But did my old dad? I'll let you decide. I made one with all my siblings and me in a window frame and made it look cute for him. I even made two with him and I in a window frame. I wrapped it up in what would be called beginner's wrapping and hid it under the tree. Once we got to opening the presents, I waited, excited to see what his reaction was. My mom was with us, so she got to see it too. He opened them and what looked to be a smile, but small. Well, isn't that cute? entitled jerk of a dad said, making me smile wide. Thank you, I worked really hard on them. I boasted because I was happy to hear that he really liked them. Here's where it got worse, folks. They're adorable, but I was hoping for something paid, then made, entitled dad added. Yup, he said that, he really did. I was about 13 or 14 when this happened, so I should have been angry or yelled at him, but because of my autism, it took a while for the words to sink in. You don't like it? No, I do, but I'm not really into this sort of thing. But you did an amazing job, hun. Entitled Dad smiled still at me and placed it at his side on the couch where he sat. I still didn't know how to respond. Maybe I was too preoccupied in the fact it's Christmas and I got some cool stuff that I didn't think of how he responded to my gift. I just sat there quiet and confused, maybe even a little sad. Oh, but this infuriated my mom. My mother was someone you do not want to mess with. Say one thing bad and she'll turn your life around so fast you won't even realize what horrible punishment you put yourself into. She's very protective of us and once she heard those words coming out of that jerk's mouth, she was angry. After getting home from dad's house, we all went to our rooms or the TV room either to play with our new toys or watch cartoons. I was in the TV room till I heard my mom scream into the phone in the bathroom. She must have wanted to wait so she wouldn't spoil the fun we were having back at his house and didn't want any of us to hear, but we did. She was screaming about how selfish and inconsiderate he was to say that when I worked so hard for the photo frames. I couldn't hear what the demon was saying over the phone, but it must have been his usual snarky talk that continued to boil my mom's rage. She continued to scream and occasionally cuss at him, which she rarely did so it was a surprise, till she got what she could out and hung up. Later on, she cuddled me in bed saying I shouldn't let this bother me and tried to comfort me the best she could. She always laid down with us to comfort us no matter how old we were, but nothing too bad. She's a mother and wanted to cheer us up. So for several minutes of calming back rubs and kind words to say to any sad and broken child, she got up and walked out of the room. 
I continued to cry as his words slowly sank in and later made me wish to never see him over Christmas time or birthdays. To this day, I still have a hard time making things for those I care about because I'm afraid of what they'll say about it. Most of them are good, but it's still hard for me. You don't even realize sometimes that if something happened in your life that was bad, you think nothing of it till it sinks in and eventually possibly ruined your life from then on, which is what he did to me and my siblings over the years till we finally stopped seeing him all at once. He's done more mean things to me. One was how he tried to force me into answering questions about himself for raffle tickets, but that's another story. He still thinks nothing is wrong with him and will get angry if you even say anything about it to him. I'm glad he's out of my life. And if he dies, I'll cry, yeah. But at least the world is done with that entitled jerk. Entitled grandmother thinks it's improper for a girl to be working in GameStop. Hello everyone. I've been listening to Mr. Reddit while at work and it reminded me of a story of when I worked at GameStop a few years ago. Grab a snack and stay hydrated as I tell you the tale of a crazy old lady telling me that I'm not supposed to work in a video game store. It was a pretty sunny day outside on a Friday afternoon. I didn't have classes that day and my manager asked me to come in on my day off since one of my coworkers was out sick. Since I was a broke college student and liked working for this manager, I was all but happy to take an extra shift. Things were pretty slow that day, so I started to organize the Xbox 360 games up on the shelves when our lovely grandma and her grandson came into the store. Our cast, we've got the entitled grandma, the grandson, who is a pretty nice kid, me and the manager, always said good morning to customers no matter the time of day. Hello, welcome to GameStop. Is there anything I can do to help you? Entitled Grandma looked at me with a face of disgust and scoffed as she walked past me. I was pretty confused since I usually get at least a hello from customers, but I didn't want to push it and just continued with my organizing. After a few minutes, I could hear Grandson talking to Entitled Grandma about Left 4 Dead 2 and other zombie games that he wanted to get with his birthday money. Now, grandson looked to be 7 to 8 at the most, so I didn't think it was the best idea for him to be playing games like that. But again, I didn't say anything and finished with the shelves, returning to behind the counter to do a bit of cleanup. I hear the smack of plastic on the counter a few times later with an impatient wrinkly face staring at me in a I'm waiting expression and grandson looking super excited. Hello again ma'am, uh, were you able to find everything okay? Yes, please just check us out. I want to be rid of this place. Uh, okay. I took a look at the two cases on the counter, Resident Evil 6 and Plants vs. Zombies. Excuse me, ma'am. By company policy, I have to inform you that this game, pointing to Resident Evil 6, is rated M for mature. And what does that mean? She scoffed again. Oh, it means... I proceed to read the label on the back of the case, like blood, violence, alcohol use, etc. Well, of course there's violence. It's a zombie game. I know that, ma'am. I'm just doing my job to inform- Don't talk to me like I'm stupid. Why are you even here anyway? You're like 15. You're too young to be working here. I was 20, but I do look like I'm younger than my age. But 15? I shook my head. I'm actually a college student. A college student? But you're a woman! You should be starting a family right now! This actually pushed my buttons, most of them. My family has been telling me the same thing since I was about to finish high school, and that I should be making babies and getting married rather than getting an education. I didn't need someone to tell me that again. And if she thought I was 15, was she expecting me to be a mother already? That's pretty creepy. Ma'am, do you want the games or no? I was pretty much done with her at this point. I do, but I don't want a woman to get them for me. Thanks for contradicting yourself there. I have a grandson that would make beautiful babies with you. Let me show you what he looks like. Entitled Grandma proceeded to take out an old wallet and show me a picture of a pimple-faced preteen. See? Isn't he handsome? I roll my eyes. Whatever you say. Are you saying that my grandson is ugly? She slammed her wallet onto the counter. <coughs> How rude! 
Ma'am, if you continue to yell, I will have to get my manager. Do it then! You shouldn't even be working here anyway! Women have no right to be working in a place like this. You should be at a hospital, like a normal woman. I throw my hands up in the air, giving up on this entire situation and walk to the back room where my manager was in a business call. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but there's an old fashioned lady telling me to have babies with her preteen grandkid. My manager sped out the coffee he was drinking and excused himself from his call where entitled grandma immediately started to yell at him for hiring a woman to do a man's job and illegally hiring an underage worker. Grandson this whole time was red faced and just wanted to leave. I gave him a quick pat on the shoulder and told him this would be over soon. Get out of my store. Excuse me? How dare you tell me to get out? I'm a paying customer. Actually, I believe grandson is. He wanted to buy these games with his money, right? Yeah, I saved all my money just for today. Entitled Grandma, stop making today suck. Entitled Grandma gasped, and it sounded like a dying donkey. Now you're telling me off? Wait until I tell your mother. Manager, should I call the police? He nodded, and I went behind the counter to call them. Manager continued to argue with Entitled Grandma for another 20 minutes. Some pretty colorful insults I don't feel comfortable saying, but my favorite was... That girl's nothing but a nasty. You only hired her so you could get all the boys to come here and do nasty things with her. Yes, she actually said that. Entitled Grandma was arrested since we didn't even give her a charge to argue and let the police look at the cameras. I don't know what she was arrested for exactly, but I remember my manager saying it was pretty bad. I graduated with an associate's degree in animation and game design the next semester, by the way. I guess I'm not a normal girl after all. Next we've got Karen's middle seat, not actually hers. Another Karen on a plane post reminded me of this lovely experience last month. Due to a new procurement process mess at work nobody cares about, I booked a flight to my conference destination really late. All that was left were middle seats or ponying up personally for an upgrade, which wasn't going to happen for a relatively short flight. Out in the boarding area, they announced many, many times that it was a full flight and kept begging people to gate check their bags. It wasn't subtle. After they let all the military, first class, frequent flyers and blah blah blah, need more time people board, my group got to plod down the jetway. Once we got onto the plane, I could see my fate before me. A wild Karen was sitting in an aisle seat. The middle was piled with Karen crap. Backpack, electronic devices, stuffed animals, snacks, and a miniature Karen was over in the window seat, happily kicking the empty seat in front of her so hard it was visibly shaking. Joy. That's Count's Rose. Definitely mine. When I got to the row, I pointed to the middle seat to indicate it's mine. Karen did not budge or move a single thing from that crap hinge. I tried again with the whole, sorry, that's my seat routine. She snapped at me. Sit somewhere else. I'm all, can't do that, full flight. This is my assigned seat. Well, Karen wasn't having that. Did I know what kind of day she had had? It started the day before. Our flight was diverted. We missed our connections. We slept in the airport overnight. We just need a little space. Sit somewhere else. And she shoved her knees up full against the seat in front of her, blocking my way into the crappy, even before she loaded it with Karen cruft middle seat. Then she shut her eyes and pretended to be asleep. I slam the flight attendant button over her head and awkwardly crouch in the row behind so people can get past. We had already made a scene and clogged up boarding. As I crouched there, I realized nothing about Karen's story made sense. We weren't at the big city airport where flights sometimes did get diverted. We were at the tiny regional airport that only had a couple airlines that flew to a few major hubs. No connections happened there. There also weren't a bunch of other people griping about missed connections, diversions, or having slept in the airport. When a tiny regional has that happen, you know, everybody knows. Karen was probably full of crap. Anyhow, the saintly flight attendant arrived to ask what was wrong. She checked my ticket. Yeah, that was unfortunately my seat. Then she asked Karen to see her and the kids' tickets. 
Karen kept her eyes closed and continued to pretend to be asleep. I don't know how she thought that would work, but the flight attendant shook her shoulder several times and kept speaking loudly to her. You must remember, boarding is going on all around this. People were hefting bags, trying to find seats, and the usual loud mayhem. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Flight attendant told Karen that if she didn't respond, paramedics would be called about an unresponsive passenger. That got Karen's attention. She popped up and demanded, What? I'm trying to sleep. And then went off on the same rant she did at me about her travel nightmare and needing the space. Flight attendant explained that it was a full flight and the seats were booked, standby passengers were waiting for any extras, and Karen needed to let me sit. This sent Karen into wails over being separated from her baby by a stranger. Flight attendant pointed out that she booked the aisle and window seats herself, leaving that separation, so she could either ask me to swap or sit in them as assigned. That set off another rant. Apparently, some frequent flyer travel advice sites out there says to book window aisle and hope nobody sits in the middle so you get free space. I imagine this works on flights that aren't full. This one was full. Karen swore she got that tip for how to get an extra seat free off airline's website and threw quite the fit that after they told her to do that, she was being punished by being separated from her baby. Meanwhile, the people in the row in front arrived and Minnie Karen was still kicking away like she was at soccer practice. It was so bad the guy in the window seat didn't even want to sit down. He leaned over and asked the kid to stop kicking. Minnie Karen let out an unholy wail of STRANGER that she had apparently been trained to do if a stranger spoke to her. Karen turned from her screaming fit at the flight attendant to take in the scene of an adult man the row in front of her looking at her child in horror and the child wailing STRANGER at the top of her lungs only to turn right back to the flight attendant while pointing at the dude and demanding GET THIS CREEP OFF THIS PLANE IMMEDIATELY That's where flight attendant went from firm and reasonable to utterly brilliant. She sagely nodded at Karen. We can't remove him from the flight because he hasn't done anything to your child, but we can certainly get you two reseated if you're not comfortable with your current location and situation. Gather your things. We'll take you up to the desk and see if there are any upgrades available to the more space seats. It was amazing. Karen puffed up in self-importance as she gathered her now happy spawn and all their crap. She threw elbows like mad, shoving her way upstream past all the people still trying to board. She had heard the magic word, upgrade, and she was going to get there before it was gone. I sort of cursed to myself that they probably were upgrading her to make her calm the heck down and was not thrilled that her ridiculous display worked. Then, flight attendant's coworker came back to ask if I preferred the window or aisle to my middle seat. Aisle, thanks. At least I got that, right? It got better. Flight attendant's coworker explained that I could relax because Karen, an entitled kid, wouldn't be returning. There were no upgrades. It was faster and easier to get them off the flight that way than calling security. They filled the seats with waiting standby passengers and presumably Karen had plenty of space to sit next to her mini Karen in the terminal while waiting for the next flight. Well played, flight attendant. Well played. Next up we've got, Entitled parent destroys my racket so I wouldn't defeat his son at a tournament. Hi guys. First of all, I would like to thank you all for the support I received in my first post. I also received a lot of feedback for my English grammar and I am willing to improve it in this new post. For the ones who don't know about it, English isn't my native language since I'm Mexican. Anyway, hope you like this one as well. So a little backstory. After the incident with my arm due to the entitled parent in my first post, I decided to get into a sport to challenge myself and to practice more with it. So I get all of my mobility back and so I did with a racquetball. For the one who didn't know, it is more or less like squash, but with a way more big and bouncy ball, and also different racket styles. After almost two years of practicing, when I was 15, my trainer told me that I should enter a tournament since the winners would be getting a trip to play in the state tournament, and, if winning, also in the national tournament. So I did it. Let's meet the cast. We've got my mom, the trainer, the entitled parent, the entitled parent's son, cool adversary by the way, the referee, and me. 
So, this happened during the quarterfinals of the state tournament. It was really hard to get there since many of the participants were experienced people, but I managed to get that far. However, when it was around 5 minutes for my turn to play my next opponent, I feel someone tap on my shoulder. And here he is. A huge man who seemed to have changed all his hair to his beard, just staring at me with a sort of fake smile and an unnatural killing glare in his eyes. Dialogue was something like this. Hi. Uh, hello? So, you do play good, boy. Uh, thanks, I suppose. You know, the boy you are about to face is my son. He has been practicing this for years. Me, supposing it was just an attempt to be a good sportier. Well, me too. I suppose it's going to be a really good match then. Yeah, sure. You'll see. I was actually wondering if you could just, you know, quit. What? Yeah, I mean, it is not a big deal. Also, you will actually do yourself a favor, since I know my son would wreck you if you face each other. I'm actually upset with his attitude. Okay, then we will see who the best player is. Are you for real? My trainer's like, hey, it's your turn now. Entitled Parent stopped his sentence and just walks away with a really bad mood. I swear that if glares could kill, his could be the John Wick's version of them all. So the game started and it was a really good game. We were actually really tied, however I was gaining the lead of it. Just a few minutes later into the game, a horn is played. This means that something has happened and the game needs to be stopped. It appeared that in the game that was at our side, also to decide the semi-finalist, one of the contestants fell off and got a lesion so he wasn't able to play and needs to get to the hospital. As I got out of the game room to see what has happened, I left my racket at the side of my competitors. Huge mistake. So it appears that while everyone was distracted, Entitled Parent saw it as a chance to sabotage me so his son could win. He literally entered the room and destroyed my racket as if a bowling ball had passed through it. Fortunately, this wasn't unnoticed. My trainer says, Hey, what the heck are you doing? Uh, nothing. My mom was like, Hey, that is my son's racket. What are you doing to it? What Entitled Parent said next actually shocked me. Oh, well, I was just assuring that nothing happened to it. But when I got here, it was like this. What? I literally saw you breaking the cords. The referee was like, Sir, I must tell you that this is a severe infraction to the game rules. Your son can't play in the tournament. This isn't fair. I didn't do anything. Surely it's just a poor trick of him. Referring to my trainer. To get his student to the semifinals, since he can't do a darn thing against my son. Well, this can be fixed by simply looking at the cameras that are recording the matches. Suddenly, every inch of security in Entitled Parent's face vanished. I just limited myself to observe the show. Okay, sir. I am sorry, but as the camera shows, you are guilty, so your son will be disqualified. Entitled Parent's son was like, Oh, not this again. Thanks for not trusting in me, Dad. Even if I couldn't win, it was because my opponent was better and deserved to win fairly. Oh, come on. I was just trying to help you. I'm sure you could win anyways. Then why did you sabotage me instead of trusting him? At this moment, a mix of rage and embarrassment was shown in both Entitled Parent's face and voice. This doesn't concern you. Also, don't be that confident. You don't have a racket, so you can't play anyways. No, Dad. This does concern him since you broke his racket. And yes, he does have a racket. At this point, I was actually surprised since Entitled Parent's son grabbed his own racket which was way newer than mine for what I could see and was way more expensive as well, and gave it to me. Please, take this as an apology for my dad's behavior. I hope you win the tournament. At this moment, my mom and trainer arrive with the security of the police, so they take Entitled Parent away with his son. Entitled Parent was enraged at this moment because his son was on my side of the dispute. Trainer asked my mom if she wanted to press charges, but she said that I was the one who should take the decision, to which I happily said no, since I actually got a new racket in that situation, and I felt bad for the kid having to deal with his dad. What happened next was that I got myself into the finals, but ended up losing against the one who actually made it into the semifinals in the national tournament. For what I can tell of Entitled Parent, he received obligatory parenting courses and is a way better person now. 
Also, his kid is one of my best friends anyways. So that's it. Hope you liked this post. If I see you like it, I will probably upload another one next week. Also, if you see any misspellings or something like that, please tell me in the comments so I can correct it later. See you, folks! And our final story of the day. Entitled Karen yells at a store associate over a company's policy. Background. I work for a shoe company, and it's not an outlet, where the shoe boxes are all on the sales floor, so I have to provide full service, measuring feet, getting the shoe boxes from the back room, etc. And this was during December, tis the season. I had gotten a brand new store manager that was a real piece of work, scheduled me for over 40 hours a week when I was only legally allowed to work a maximum of 20 hours and when she was assigned work from our district manager, she would dump the work on me and take the day off. She lied about being pregnant for about two months before actually getting pregnant, so also an entitled parent. But this story isn't about her. So, company policy on gift cards during the holiday season was to call a certain number to verify a customer's card and ID had matching addresses to prevent fraud. Our mall had a problem with credit card stealing. This was company policy and failure to do this was termination. In comes the entitled lady. For our cast, we've got my crappy manager, we've got the entitled lady, we've got Adam who's the manager from another store, and me. We were horribly understaffed and it was a very busy Friday, and it was just the manager and me with about 15 people in a small store at a time. At this point in the day, everyone was trying to check out, and I'm usually very quick about checking people out until Entitled Lady comes to my register. This conversation is paraphrased because I repressed the memory of this woman. I want a gift card, she demanded, didn't even say please. Whatever, I'm used to rude customers. No problem, I just have to call a number to make sure your address on your ID matches your credit card. I picked up the store phone. No, why do you need to do that? She got more irritated. It's just to prevent fraud in our store, ma'am. I, she interrupted me. Well, my address isn't going to match. I moved a few months ago. I was a little nervous because I rarely get customers that yell at me and I don't like it when people raise their voices at me. Well, I'm sorry ma'am, that I cannot sell the gift card to you. If you want to avoid the whole call procedure, you could pay in cash. I don't carry cash. At this point, I looked over at manager for assistance because I don't get paid enough to get yelled at by Karen. Of course, manager made sure to ignore my silent pleas and continued checking out her customers. Jerk. Ma'am, I cannot sell you the gift card. I'm sorry. Just do it. I've been to so many stores today to find the store's gift cards, and I couldn't find them anywhere but here. Our gift cards are only sold in our stores. At this point, I'm tearing up, because I don't handle being berated for something I can't change very well, and I walk to the back room. The store phone rang, and it was another location. I answered. Hey, it's Adam. Uh, can you ask- I interrupted him. Adam, I can't do this. This woman keeps yelling at me. I explained the situation, sobbing. Adam was the manager that trained me to be at this location, and he was a cool guy. He told me to calm down and that manager will take care of it. She didn't. And since he forgot what he called for, he just wished me the best of luck the rest of my shift and hung up. I had stopped crying. I was gone for maybe five minutes from the floor when I came back out. The woman was still there with an annoyed look on her face. I have money now. Can I buy the darn card now? Yes, ma'am, you can. I did not say another word to this woman and just handed her the card after I put the money in my register. She snatched the card and stomped out of the store, mumbling insults about me and the store. The rest of the customers who had been waiting to get checked out weren't upset because they knew how unreasonable the woman was being and all apologized and the rest of my shift went off without any more angry Karens. I still tell that story. I work at the same shoe company, but at a different location with my awesome manager, and when I told her the story, she talked about how she would have kicked out the woman. So yeah, don't yell at associates about our company policy. We didn't make it, and we aren't paid enough to endure your abuse. Thank you for reading. Kid finds a bike in my backyard. Mom goes berserk when I take it back. Backstory. I'm a single parent. I have a beautiful girl that's turning five in August. The past year I have been fighting with my ex that tried to keep my kid away from me. Lawyers aren't cheap, and being single doesn't exactly help with my finances. 
A couple of months ago, I won the lawsuit and I finally got to have my kid at my home again. For the past few weeks, she was saying she wanted a bicycle. But still recovering from the lawsuit bills, I wasn't able to afford it. Past week, I got my summer bonus, which finally gave me the financial boost I needed. So, yesterday, I finally was able to buy my little girl her bike she wanted so badly. I enjoyed my time with her riding our bikes, but then it was getting time for dinner, which I still had to make. So we head back home and park the bikes in the backyard. We go inside and I start making dinner. After about 10 minutes, I spot movement in the corner of my eye through the kitchen window that's on the side of the house. I see this kid, guessing six or seven years old, just casually strolling by with the brand new bike I just got today. My heart dropped and I run to the front door, hoping I'd catch him before he rides away. I was lucky I did. I yanked the bike out of his hands and freaked out to him, saying it was mine and he had no right to just walk into other people's yards and take things. I was upset. I forced him to get the heck off my property and set the bike inside my front halfway, thinking it's over. Boy, was I wrong. After comforting my little girl that never saw me this mad, poor thing, I returned to the kitchen to continue making dinner. 15 minutes later, doorbell rings. It's the kid and his evil mother. You give my boy his bike back. He found it. It's his. He found it in my backyard. I got it for my kid today. You should try teaching your darn kid some manners. He shouldn't trespass on other people's property to take their things. Don't tell me how to raise my kid. Give me the bike back or I'm calling the police. <laughs> Call the darn police. And I slammed the door in her face. By this point, my four-year-old is crying her eyes out and I get to comfort her again as she's thinking she's losing her brand new bike. Her sobbing finally over, I try continuing to make dinner. Yet again. Preparation's done. I'm about to put it all on the stove. Doorbell. I flip out, storm to the door, violently open it, getting ready to just explode in her face. Guess what? She actually called the cops. I instantly calm down when I see it's the police and invite one of the two officers inside while the other stays with the evil woman. I explain the situation and show him the box the bike came in, along with the receipt that has my name on it. He shrugs and apologized for the inconvenience, assured me I won't be bothered again. I let him out and close the door with a smug smile on my face. I check the front window to see what's happening and I see her go into full tantrum. It ends with her in handcuffs and on the back seat of the patrol car. Bye, Felicia. Don't know what happened to her and I don't care. I finally finished dinner and my kid still has her bike. That's all that matters to me. Boy, what a day. Next we've got, my dad felt my savings should go to my brother. So this happened a couple of years ago, but it still just hurts. My dad and I have never really seen eye to eye. He grew up with no sisters and an awful mother figure and none of his friends have daughters, only sons. I don't blame him for struggling to raise a girl when he had absolutely no reference point, but he didn't need to show blatant favoritism towards my brother. I've always been the black sheep a little. My parents and younger brother have always been this nice little trio. My brother is a mummy's boy, but dad dotes on him regardless. He's four years younger than me. I'm 18, he's 14. I've struggled to find my place in the family. Even my standing as which sibling I am isn't certain because my dad accidentally impregnated a girl at 19, had my half brother, and I was born 14 years later. My older brother was enough in my life that I don't feel like the oldest child, but not enough to feel like I'm the middle. I'm just my dad's retrial at parenting and my brother is the beneficiary of all his practice. Now, aside from that little rant, the actual story. My brother and I are very musical. I play a multitude of instruments. He just plays saxophone and he's good, always has been. He suffered classic younger sibling syndrome we were in a much better financial position when I began playing clarinet that I got a really good beginner intermediate model that I still play today. When he started about four years later, things had gotten tight, so he had to rent his from the local concert band and it wasn't great. Originally it was fine because my parents didn't want to invest in something he might not commit to 
but he did and loved it. At this point, I was 15 and I had been working for two years at a local sports club, earning less than minimum wage because I was underage, working my butt off and saving a pretty hefty percentage of my income. My father, who felt responsible for my job since he knew the owner, but I had actually gotten the job myself, decided he was entitled to my savings, about $500 at the time. His exact words were, We could use your savings to buy your brother a better saxophone. God, it crushed me. First of all, you cannot get a sax better than the one he has for only $500. Secondly, what kind of father asks one child to give up practically two years of work for another? It made me feel like he had more pride or hope for his son that his daughter's savings should contribute towards it, even though at the time I was saving for a student-level clarinet, and he knew that. He never offered to pay the money back or anything, and thankfully, after I asked mom what she thought of it and she lost her mind, it was never brought up again. Though he has asked for my savings since, and then I've said no. Can't wait to move out next year. Edit. So I should make a couple of things clear. My father didn't actually take the money. Mum shut that situation down real quick, but it didn't stop him from asking and trying to manipulate me into giving them up for a long time. I live in New Zealand, and my accounts have been in my name since I was 13. My parents have just as much right to them as the stranger across the street, absolute zero. Credit isn't really a thing here, so that's not an issue either. Can't believe all the attention this got, and thanks for all the advice. Edit 2. I have half a year of high school left, and then next year I'm moving 8 hours away to university. So that's where my savings are going. I can't move out now. Also, to explain the minimum wage situation, in New Zealand, minimum wage is $17.70, and it tends to go up every year. However, you don't have to pay minimum wage to employees under the age of 16. You can pay them whatever you want. I started on $10 an hour at age 13, and nearly a year into the job, I went up to $14.25, as that was the current minimum wage. And that's where my wage stayed until I turned 16, even when the minimum wage rose. Next up we've got, Dumb kid almost gets me hospitalized at Renaissance Fair, learns his lesson real fast. Disclaimer, on mobile, so apologies for any formatting, spelling, or grammatical errors. I'm not the greatest of storytellers, but I'll try to be as clear and concise as possible. Too long didn't read at the bottom. For our cast, we've got me, Pirate Queen of the Seven Seas as dubbed by the Queen of the Renaissance Fair. Husband, wonderfully loving husband and first mate. We've got the Crotch Goblin, we've got the nice mom of the Crotch Goblin, and we've got my awesome vendor friend who works at the fair. My local Renaissance Fair is one of the best and most exciting events my husband and I like to go to. We love to dress up and sometimes even volunteer as roaming entertainers. This year, we ended up just being regular patrons, but that was okay with us. The day had already started off a bit rocky and it seemed like everything was against us, even getting to the event. A normally 10 or so minute drive turned into roughly half an hour as there was a marathon event that same day which resulted in multiple streets being closed off. Streets that led to the highway we needed to get on. When we finally arrived at the fair, we finished getting ready in our costumes, got into the fair, and had a mostly wonderful day, despite the on and off rain. Toward the evening, we had met up with some friends and were making our way toward a fire pit by the Viking tents to warm up a bit. As we walked, we noticed a roughly 10-year-old boy, the goblin with a toy bow and arrow who was repeatedly shooting it in the air and letting it land onto the ground. We all thought this incredibly stupid, even commenting that he would hurt someone if he wasn't careful. However, since he was positioned in a bit of a clearing a ways away from the fire pit, we thought nothing of it. Oh, how naive we were. 20 to 30 minutes of chatting later, I was getting a little too warm being so close to the fire, so I opted to stand and back up a bit. While standing, I suddenly felt something that felt like a foam ball pelt me in the face with force. I didn't even see it coming, and my left eye felt like I had something stuck underneath my contact lens. It took me a solid two or three minutes to figure out what had actually happened, as I was busy trying to tend to whatever was stuck in my eye. Looking on the ground to my right, I see it. The arrow. That little jerk shot an arrow at me. 
What had actually happened was that little goblin shot the arrow into the air like he was doing before, but it had unfortunately come down and bounced off my wide-brimmed pirate hat, which caused it to flop right into my left eye. Thank the gods it did, because if I wasn't wearing that hat, it most certainly would have shot me right in the eye. Realizing what happened, I looked up to see Crotch Goblin staring at me with a meek expression. I glared at him with the passion of a thousand burning suns, and the following brief conversation ensued. Don't do it again. I said this in a tone that read, Don't you dare try it. I didn't mean to. His tone was almost accusatory, as if he were offended that I called him out. I know you didn't mean to. Just don't do it again. I said more sternly. In truth, I was absolutely livid and really wanted to lay into the little brat, but I decided to simply let it go, as I just wanted to move on and enjoy what little time was left of the day. Husband, however, was just as livid and sometimes reacts a bit more aggressively than me. He was absolutely fuming and glared at Goblin as he sprinted away towards the seats at the outdoor stage area. A few minutes later, it was time to end the night with the light and fire dance show, which is one of my favorite things to watch. We made our way to the front row seats and sat down as we waited for the show to begin, but husband was still looking around for Goblin, hoping to find his parents. Even though I told him to let it go and that I was fine, he insisted on at least speaking to one of our vendor friends about it. So I agreed, but told him to hurry so he didn't miss the show. After asking one of our friends to save his seat, Husband took off toward friend's tent to speak with him about the situation to see what we could do about it. A few minutes later, the show began and my friend and I watched the first few acts. Around 10 minutes later, I was starting to get worried because hadn't seen husband come back yet and I didn't want him to miss the whole show. So I told my friend that if he didn't show up within five minutes, I'd go and find him. Two minutes go by and I see my friend hurriedly walking by at the back of the seats, which was a bit surprising to see as he's quite a larger older man who uses a cane to walk. I then see husband sprinting to catch up and the two disappear behind a crowd. I strained my neck to try and spot them, but ended up not being able to look past the crowd of people gathered around. With no luck, I simply tried to focus on the show and waited for husband to take his place besides me. Sure enough, he does so after another 5-10 to 10 minutes, and I eagerly ask him what happened. What he told me was that he had spoken with our friend about the situation, who promptly retrieved the owner of the fair itself. Then all three of them went to find Goblin. Apparently, he was easy to spot, sitting with his family in the back row of seats, and friends snatched up Goblin, whose mother followed to see what was going on. As husband was telling me this, I was worried that mother was going to be an entitled Karen, but she actually turned out to be a really nice lady. Turns out, nice mom was actually one of the vendors there, the one that happens to make my favorite homemade root beer. Also, turns out that Goblin wasn't even supposed to have that bow and arrow and had bought it without his mother's permission or knowledge even after being explicitly told not to. When husband told her what had happened to me, she was absolutely livid. According to husband, Nice Mom promptly took the goblin's bow and arrows away and scolded him for being an absolute idiot. He tried to lie and say, I wasn't shooting it at anyone. But this only made her scold at him more, giving him a much needed lesson in how gravity works. Apparently, the way she looked at Goblin pretty well guaranteed the whooping for him when they got home. She even offered us some free root beer, but we declined as we didn't want to impose, hence the situation was more or less resolved. Our intention wasn't really to punish Goblin for what he had done to me, as I was virtually unharmed. It was more to keep him from doing it again and possibly really hurting someone else. Though, I gotta say, it was pretty nice to hear that I got some justice. After hearing Husband's side, I couldn't stop grinning for the rest of the night, and the show continued to be a blast to watch. To those of you who made it this far, thank you so much. I know it's a pretty anticlimactic end to such a lengthy buildup, but I can guarantee the revenge felt great at the time, and it always makes me smile when I think about it. Next we've got, Entitled Mom Tries to Get Me Fired for Refusing to Provide Free Food, Loses Over $300. Sup dudes, I've had a lot of these experiences at almost every job I've had. This is the first of many to come. I'll start chronologically and work forward. Age 16. Job. K 
Cashier at Mango Joe's Grill, SeaWorld, San Diego. Cast and crew. We've got the entitled mom, the poor husband, entitled kids one through three, the manager, and yours truly. It was a pretty standard shift job. You stand at the end of a restaurant leading to the dining section and ring up orders for the items you see. Take the money and give the change. I had an awesome take no prisoners manager at this job who was on the lawful side of the morality scale. I spot my manager looking closely at a woman who I had seen talk to my counterpart a few times. There's two cashiers for this restaurant, both at the exit to the dining section. And the manager is giving this woman an extremely upset look. We make eye contact and she nods in my direction, then towards Karen marking her as my customer this time. Karen attempts to go up to the counterpart and I call her over to my register instead. She had on her tray $95 worth of food, seven beef taco bowls. Her eyes visibly bulge when she sees it ring up on the register. That's a total of $95, cash or card? I'm an honored guest in the park and was told my food would be free. In that case, I'll need my manager- Look here, you crappy fat jerk. I'm here with my three precious babies and we aren't going to pay $95 for such a small amount of food. The terrors behind her started giggling at their mom's outburst. Mind you, I have the body of a football player with a few extra pounds, so in training, I was taught to slouch and bend my knees to look less imposing. I'm a six foot tall, 275 pound white dude. I stand up and stop slouching. The hellspawn stop giggling and Karen takes a visible step back. I say just a smidge louder this time. If you want free food, I will need to have my manager override the pricing and she's on her way now. I'm going to have you fired for talking back to a customer. We are always right. You'll never work here again. My manager was like, is there an issue with the payment? You're holding up the line. He was threatening me. He was not. He's the nicest employee we have on registers. Ego boost. We are special guests at the park. We don't have to pay for this. In that case, could I see your tickets? We don't have them on us. We didn't think we needed them inside the park. Entitled Kid 1, while holding five tickets. Here you go, mommy. I notice that the group contains a fifth person who looks like he's given up on life. Head in his hand, finger and thumb rubbing temple. These are just regular tickets, not VIP tickets. You need to pay for your food. Entitled Mom turns visibly red in the face and throws her tray with the force of a thousand suns across the room and into the wall. I will not pay more money. I've spent $500 here already today. Well, now you know you have to pay for that no matter what. I will not. I want to speak to your manager. I am the manager, and you are staying put until security gets here. Then you are leaving. I step out from my register and stand in front of the exit, blocking Karen and her hellspawn. She stomps towards me and starts smacking her flabby fat hands into my chest trying to get me away from the door. Her kids are audibly crying and don't think the situation is funny anymore. Around this time, security shows up and my awesome manager has her escorted out of the restaurant and barred from the park. $500 for two adults and three kids at SeaWorld means she got maybe three souvenirs and her tickets. What a waste. And our final story of the day. Entitled Dad gets mad at me for not helping his son on an attraction. So this happened like two to three weeks ago. And sorry, this is on mobile. It's late and I didn't want to start my computer. Lovely cast. We've got the Entitled Dad, the Adorable Kid, yours truly, and the Adorable Kid's mom. So I work at an arcade at a bowling alley and on Saturdays we usually have birthday parties. In the arcade we have something called the Fun Zone where there are three attractions, the Laser Frenzy, Time Freak, and Spin Zone Bumper Cars. Only important one is the bumper cars. We have a couple of rules on bumper cars which are, children must be at least 36 centimeters, three feet, to ride. They must be three years old or older to ride, and no one should be on anyone's lap at all. You know, for safety reasons. So I take those rules pretty seriously since I like to do my job as best I can. While I was working the counter, I saw this pretty huge group of people and since I was the only one working at the two areas, which is pretty normal, someone goes and asks if I can start the attraction. So someone did and he said, I, 
Man who work in the bumper cars. That would be me, sir. I'll be there in just a sec. I tend to have a jolly personality, so the customers think I don't hate my job. Which I don't, but oh lord, this guy. Let me tell you. There are exactly seven cars for only seven people. So I walk over there and open the gate. Then I count out until I get to the adorable kid. He looked a bit small, so I just asked him. Hey, dude, can I ask how old you are? Then comes his mother. Is there a problem, sir? Oh no, I just want to check how old he is and know his height. Why do you need to know that? It's mainly for safety. Before I could finish my sentence, Entitled Dad steps in. Why is my son not on the bumper cars? Well, I'd just like to know the height and the age of your son so I can determine if he is eligible to ride the bumper cars. He's three years old, he said angrily. Awesome, uh, let's just measure him and see if he can ride. I took adorable kid to our measuring board and he was over the requirement by a little. Looks like you can, buddy. I'll put you first on the next one, promise. Why not put him on this one? All seats are filled up, sir. He's gonna have to wait. How long is he going to wait? It's four minutes per ride. Entitled Dad smacks his cheeks. Man! After the four minutes, I escorted the first group out of the bumper cars so the next one can come in. I always try to help some of the kids get up out of the cars if they need it, and that's what I was doing for Adorable Kid. Though, it seemed he didn't need it since he got up on his own and managed to buckle himself in. Smart kid. But I guess Entitled Dad didn't like the fact he did it all by himself because he came inside the area and started yelling at me. Why didn't you help my son get on the bumper car? How long have you been working here, huh? Six, almost seven months, sir. And you can't help my child get settled on this darn thing? Sir, he was- He what? He was able to get up on his own and buckled his seatbelt on his own. I'm trying to keep my cool since he was all up in my face. You need to do your freaking job and help my child. Okay, sir, I said while trying to still be professional. I pressed the button for the game to start, and while the music was playing, I could hear Entitled Dad talking about how I was being rude to him and called his kid ugly. I didn't. And he should get my manager to get me fired. Four minutes passed by, an adorable kid's group is done. So I start escorting them out and one kid in the group couldn't unbuckle his seatbelt. I went over to her, unbuckled her seatbelt and helped her down. She looked smaller than adorable kid. Then I hear from the back. Oh, so now you're gonna help kids now. Good job. I just ignore him and continue doing my job that I don't know how to do. Maybe two hours later, I see the mom and the entitled dad talking to each other. An entitled dad comes up to me and says, I apologize for the way I treated you. You are a good person, and I appreciate the hard work you do in this building. Thank you. Y'all have a nice evening. If that isn't the most fake apology ever, I don't know what is. Hope I never see him again. Entitled teacher tries to fail me because I was going to community college. Hello everyone. This is my first ever post to Reddit, so please be gentle. Also, if you are a YouTube channel and wish to tell this story, then please do with my full permission. Put your video in the comments too, so we can all enjoy. So a bit of context before I begin. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was 14. First day of high school for me. It was one of the worst cases that my doctor had seen and I almost died from it too. Please go to a doctor if you notice anything wrong with you. Don't be me and wait till you're literally bleeding out of your... downstairs. On to the story. We've got Miss Olga, the demon teacher from heck. We've got nice counselor that came to my rescue. We've got dad and mom. Miss Olga and I didn't get along during my senior year of high school. This is putting it mildly. I'm 25 now and still hate this woman for what she did to me. Everything started to go downhill with Miss Olga. I had her for AP English when we were asked by her to tell what college we were planning to go to after we graduated. I was living with my dad at the time, who is a hardworking machinist, so I was on my own when it came to paying for college. I told Miss Olga I was going to go to a local community college to save money, and she scoffed. You're in my class, so you should be applying to better places than community college. I didn't want to argue with her, so I just shook my head and left it at that. From that point on, I had a target on my back. She began to openly mock me in class about everything. The way I sat in my chair? Stupid! 
asking a friend to let me know what work I may have missed due to my Crohn's? Cheating! Can't get to school early because I lived a few towns away and could only take the bus to school? Lazy! I could go on, but it only gets worse from here. My life hit the fan about halfway through the semester. My grandpa had passed away from brain cancer and we were very close. Unlucky for me, the stress of the situation and the grieving made my Crohn's act up very badly. I ended up missing a week of school. When I got back the following week, the mocking got worse. She started to hand me after school detention slips for missing too much work every single week. And since I couldn't get to school early to make up whatever assignment I had missed, she would purposely make it so I could only turn in the assignments in the morning after I would even arrive. All of the work I did in detention wasn't good enough, so she gave me failing grades. She started calling me stupid and unworthy to be in her class almost on a daily basis. Before all this, English was my best subject and now I was failing. I couldn't take it anymore and started to cry myself to sleep every night, having mental breakdowns and sobbing over my schoolwork. My grades dropped in all of my other classes. My homeroom teacher noticed this as I was in his AP Civics class and sent me to go talk with my counselor. When I got to his office, I ugly cried and told him everything. I hate crying in front of people, but he let me get it all out. What I didn't know was that nice counselor also had a bad relationship with Miss Olga and he hatched up a plan to make her pay. Unknown to me, nice counselor called both of my parents who both came to the school and demanded to speak with Miss Olga. This is the conversation I was told happened. Nice counselor. Miss Olga, do you know why Hatter Hare's parents are here today? I would assume it's to apologize to me for their lazy daughter. Dad, I would punch you right now if I could. Excuse me? Nice counselor, get this guy out of here. My mom was like, I'd do it too. Do you know what you've done to her? Do you know how sick she is? Sick? Please, she's not sick. She's just skipping my class. Miss Olga, had her hair was diagnosed with Crohn's disease three years ago and is still recovering from the shock it's put on her body. Don't you lie to me. She's just a whiny little brat that can't handle how stupid she is. Call her stupid one more time. I dare you. Now you're threatening me? No wonder your daughter's unstable. Just look at her parents. Nice counselor asked my parents to leave the room but not before my parents threatened to sue the school for emotional and verbal abuse. Nice counselor told them that wouldn't be necessary. Miss Olga was reported to the principal by nice counselor who gave Miss Olga her final warning. Apparently she had been doing this to other students throughout the years too, but mine had been the worst nice counselor had heard regarding the situation. I did graduate that year with a D since the school forced Miss Olga to make me pass, but she was too stubborn to give me the grade that I deserved. According to Nice Counselor, it was a B. I had heard from a friend that Miss Olga was banned from teaching AP English until her retirement and was fired a few months into the next school year for bullying a sophomore that was in her French class. If you are being harassed or bullied by a teacher, don't keep it to yourself. Report it and save yourself from having to deal with that. Don't be me. Be smarter. Next we've got, my mother is acting childish because she can't get her way. So. I guess I should put a little backstory. I'm 14 and used to live with my mom up until three years ago. My mom and my dad were on really good terms despite them not being together until I decided I wanted to live with my dad. When I told her that, it broke her heart. But at the time, I hated living with her because of how crappy school was. For some reason, something changed in her that day I told her. She started treating me and my dad like we were children and it had sucked for me because I wanted to try and maintain a healthy relationship with both my parents. Also, just so it isn't as confusing later, every summer I go to the parent whom I'm not living with. Anyway, onto the story. So last Sunday, my mom had my sister call me and asked me what I wanted to do for the summer. At the time, they thought that summer break was only six weeks long. I wasn't too sure, but I said what I wanted to do with that in mind. If summer break is only six weeks long, then I would like to spend three weeks with you and mom, uh, one week with dad and two with my grandma. My mom stepped into the conversation. Excuse me, I want at least four weeks. If you can't make that happen, 
then you will just have to come and live with me for the rest of high school. I had thought her reaction was a little unreasonable, as she didn't even ask why I wanted it that way. See, up until this school year, I've never really had any good friends, and now this year, I have good friends. The problem is that because these friends' parents are so... interesting, I'm not allowed to hang out with them unless it's in a classroom. But this summer, we were planning a get-together before sophomore year. It was supposed to be this week-long thing at one of their houses, and my grandma has been really lonely because she lives in an entirely different state with none of her family. So of course I want to see her and at least try to get rid of that loneliness for at least a week or two. But despite thinking that her reaction was unreasonable, I understood where she was coming from as she probably just missed me. Okay, I think that would work, but I don't know for sure if my break is six weeks long. If it isn't, I'll let you know what's up. So Tuesday, I find out that my summer break is actually two months long, so I slightly altered my plan and texted her. Hey mom, so my summer break is actually two months long with two weeks after those two months, June and July with two weeks of August. I was thinking that I could stay with you for all of July and a week in August, then spend a week or two of June with grandma and the rest of June with dad and some friends. Oh, okay. So you decided you're going to spend the rest of high school with me. Great. I'll start cleaning out your room now. Um, no I'm not. I've told you this many times now. I'm staying with dad for the rest of high school, and you can't change that. Then I'll see you at the beginning of June. No, I want to stay out here for some of the summer. I would like to see grandma for some of the summer, and also hang out with some friends that I haven't been able to due to stuff with their parents. Excuse me? How old are you? You are coming home for the summer, or for the rest of high school. Period. Me, getting really annoyed. I am not. I want to spend some of my summer break with grandma, some of my summer break with friends and dad, and some of my summer break with you. Now we kept going back and forth a couple more times until she started to call me. So I ignored her calls because I wasn't in the wrong for trying to do what I wanted to do with my summer break and I knew she was going to be yelling at me for no reason. Next, I hear that my dad and her are arguing over the phone. I didn't hear what she was saying, but my dad filled me in later, and according to him, this is exactly what was said to the best of my ability to remember what he told me. My son has gotten completely out of control and has disrespected me by going against my word and refusing to come to me for all of the summer. Instead, he wants to do his own thing and split it up. I demand that you force him into going to me for the whole summer. My dad was like, Wait, let me get this straight. So, our son told you what he wanted to do for his summer, and you told him, no, he can't do what he wants for his summer. So then you are now getting mad that he refuses to go to you for the whole summer, and you are roping me into this? Uh, do I have that correct? Yes, you have it correct. I demand you force that little crap into staying with me for the whole summer. I swear, ever since he moved in with you, he has just become the biggest jerk just like his father. Okay, so now answer me this. Why would I ever send my son to some selfish, childish jerk who insults the person they need help from and who also insults the son they want to live with them? I will not force him into staying with you the whole summer. In fact, the only way you will see him this summer is if he wants it. He then hung up and went to talk to me for more of the story. All the while, my mother is trying to call him back. So I explained to him what was going on between me and her earlier, and he leaves and answers the phone. They ended up arguing for a bit. I don't know what about. I didn't want to ask. Once I was sure that they were done, I started texting my mother about how I understand why she could be upset, and I was sorry. But my plans weren't going to change. She told me it was okay, and that she would accept my plans. I felt so relieved after that and went to bed. While I was asleep, she pulled a complete 180 and texted me. Do what you want, son. Your sisters and I will enjoy a summer without you. You have priorities. Meet them. I'll see you when I see you. Have the summer home. I'll be moving to city with your sisters by the end of the summer. The next morning when I woke up and read the text message, I was ticked off. I started typing. You can't be serious. Are you really going to take my sister's lives away from them 
Just because you can't have me for the whole summer? Do you realize how childish you're being right now? Then I sent it. Then I put my phone aside and started to get ready. A couple seconds later, failed to send message. When I saw that, I thought that she blocked me, so I tried texting my sister to see what's up. Failed to send message. Maybe she blocked me too? So I tried texting other people that have nothing to do with my mother. Failed to send message. At this point, I realized that the jerk turned my service off. I'm on her plan. Just to make sure that my service was actually off, I turn off my Wi-Fi and try using Google. You are offline. I was mad. I woke up my dad and he called my mother to see what the heck was going on. They argued for a bit and I found out that she turned off my service and the only way she would turn it on is if I moved back with her. Right, mother. Acting like this is really going to make me want to live with you. I was already running late and had to ride my bike to school, which is about a 30 minute ride. Normally I wouldn't care about being late, but all week has been finals and at my school if you are late, then you can't take that final and can't even enter the building until the next tests have started. I was almost late. Before I left, my dad had reassured me that I was just going to switch over to his plan. When I got home, we were trying to switch to a new plan but it wouldn't work. So now I have to buy a new phone. Thanks mother, I hope you are happy with yourself. Sorry if this was long, I just thought that it would be a good fit on Entitled Parents. Next we've got Entitled parents try to steal my 1983 Ford Bronco for their entitled kid. My dad saves the day. Okay, background. I live in a small town in the country where everyone knows everyone, and my father is a deputy at the local sheriff's office. This will be important later. Cast, we've got me, the Ford driving dog lover of an OP. We've got the entitled mom, the bringer of all heck. We've got the entitled kid, bringer of all heck in training, and entitled dad, the devil himself. And we've got my dad, the deputy. Okay, I was at the gas station getting gas when entitled kid comes up to me and the entitled kid says this. Hey, nice car. Uh, thanks. What kind of car is it? It's a 1983 Ford Bronco and it's considered a wagon, compact SUV, not a car. Can I have it? What? No. Entitled Kid storms off to her mother, and that's it. When I realized, after reading a lot on this subreddit, that crap is about to hit the fan, note, I couldn't even drive away because, yes, I'm at a gas station, but I didn't start to pump the gas, and well, less than a quarter of a tank isn't gonna get me far. And here comes our entitled mom. Give my daughter your car now. I mean, it's not like you need it or anything. Yes, I do. I need my car. And for the record, it's considered a wagon, compact SUV. I don't care what it's considered. What do you need it for, you lazy teen? I was and still am 18. I use it to go to work. At this point, Entitled Dad comes over and says, I will give you $100 for the Bronco. No, I can get at least $39.95 for the thing. Listen here, you little crap. You're going to give my daughter your car or I'm calling the cops. Go ahead and call the cops. Entitled Dad calls the cops, and since we're in a small town in the countryside with little crime, the police get here in four minutes. And one of the deputies responding was my father, and after 30 minutes of listening to some BS story, my dad says, I think I know what type of vehicle I bought my son. Entitled Mom and Entitled Dad go pale, and ended up getting the key out of my hand and got into my Bronco. But remember that less than a quarter of a tank? Well, as soon as they turned on the engine, it ran out of gas, so the entitled mom and entitled dad got arrested. Edit. Mr. Reddit, if you see this post, you have my permission to use it on YouTube. Next up we've got, Entitled Choosing Beggar Mother wants me to drive over 12 hours to force her husband to do something. Hey, re-army. I've posted this in another channel, but looking back, it wasn't written that good. So I'll try again and update it, so it's more enjoyable. Or at least I hope so. So, let me tell you about my encounter with an entitled mother with a dash of choosing beggar. Be patient with me. English is not my first language, so I'll try to mess up as little as possible. For some background, I'm a baby-wearing consultant instructor. Basically, 
What you do is teach parents how to properly use baby carriers and wraps. Long pieces of special fabric, not the food. Since I'm male, this puts me in a special position. Here in Austria, there are only around three or four additional men who are doing this. Being male in this profession tends to make people think you're some sort of magic unicorn spreading candy and sunshine, even though I do the same thing as my female colleagues. Finally, the cast of the whole story. We've got this strange lady and me. So I get a phone call by an already upset sounding woman. No hello, nothing. So, I need a consultant for product X and product Y. Should take only an hour. When will you come? Uh, hi? Yes, okay. So you want to learn about product X and Y. Will it just be you? Will the father also attend? Just to let you know, learning how to use these two products can take up to two and a half hours if both of you want to join the consultation. Oh no, I don't want to carry. I want my husband to carry the kid. I've read online it's healthy for the baby, but it is too complicated and heavy. I don't want to do this, but he has to. I've already consulted moms who were around 5 foot and around 100 pounds, but okay, it's everyone's own decision. So, were these products your husband's choice? Did you already buy them? Or should I bring something to try out? No, no, he doesn't know yet. I called you because you're a man, and you will make him carry the kid. <laughs> okay. Just to give you a heads up and make it clear, babies, especially newborns, are quite sensitive. If your husband doesn't want to carry or feels unsafe, it's possible it will not work out that well. I don't want you to be disappointed in the end. <laughs> no worries. If it doesn't work out, we surely don't have to pay. Also, I read it's healthy, so this has to happen. I'm already thinking, what is wrong with her? Faking a polite laugh? Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Well, in three days will work for me. Does this fit your schedule? Where's the address that I should come to? By now, I already feel the problems creeping up. But hey, if I can do something good for the kid, why not? Perhaps the husband is less entitled and everything works out. She gives me the address. Hmm, sorry, I don't recognize this address. Since I'll use public transportation, how can I get there fastest? She got annoyed with me. Oh, that's easy. You just take line four from the central station and get off at the fourth stop. Here I start getting confused. There is no line four going from or even going by the central station in my city. Sorry, this may seem a little dumb, but in which district are you located? I don't recognize this area at all. She's even more annoyed. She's talking like I must be very slow in the head. Of course, it's a district from a whole nother city. Note, this city is nearly across my whole country, taking a five hour train ride one way, not taking into account getting to the train and to her. I'm very sorry, but on my homepage I state, I'm only doing consultations within my city and the surroundings. This would be way too far for me. If you want, I can recommend a colleague of mine and set you up with her. Her? No! You have to come. I don't want another woman messing around touching my husband. I got really annoyed with her. Listen, if I would come to your town, which would take me around 12 hours of getting there and back home, doing the consultation and going back, even if I cut down the charge for my travel time to 150 euros, a quarter of my usual rate, the train tickets and the consultation fee would be around 300 euros, so in total 450 euros. I strongly advise booking my colleague. I can assure you, all of us consultants are very professional and she will have the same quality as I could provide for a much less price. Now, that's absolutely outrageous. That's no way of treating a customer. I would have paid you 70 euros, the 60 euros you charge for an hour, and the 10 euros as a tip to chip in for travel costs. By then, I wished her a pleasant day and ended the call, because I had to fight back various reactions, ranging from laughing to asking her if she was really this delusional. Never heard from her again. Also, she didn't book any of my colleagues in her city. I just hope that kid turns out the opposite of the mother. Kind of anticlimactic at the end. But besides the entitlement of her, assuming I'll travel across a whole country for free, I'm still wondering about her, just deciding over her husband and expecting me to force him to do something. 
I hope you have a great time. Long days and pleasant nights to all of you. Wait on me now. Entitled customer gets owned by the owner. For our cast, we've got the entitled customer, the awesome manager, the owner, and me. This is a bit long, but well worth the read. I work on a farm in a farmer's market, and I'm usually there a lot, whether or not if I am working, because my son gets picked up and dropped off in my work's parking lot, so I am there all the time. I don't mind helping people out when I'm not even on the clock, but there are some customers that come in a demand to be rung up when the store isn't even open yet. We open at 8 a.m. and are waiting for the bus by around 7.45. One day while waiting, an entitled customer approaches my car while we were waiting for the bus and asks if I can let her in the store because it's really cold out. Our workplace is very accommodating in situations like this. So I said, sure, it is really cold out, but the store and the registers are not open yet but it will give you time to warm up and browse for a bit. She said thanks and entered the store right behind my son and I. I am waiting for the bus to pull up and the entitled customer was making a fuss back in our deli area and complaining because they aren't open yet. Internally, I am thinking, good lord, what have I started? In two minutes, the customer's attitude and demeanor has changed into some ugly behavior I have never witnessed before as she stomps her way up to the counter and drops a handful of items she was purchasing. Mind you, there is still no cashier yet and the register is not even open yet. So conversation ensues. Excuse me, are you going to check me out sometime today? Sorry ma'am, I'm not working today. Someone will be right with you. At this time, it's only 7.55 a.m. and the cashier on duty wasn't there yet. I proceed to page awesome manager to come to the market she comes down from upstairs and sees the customer and says, Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We don't open for another five minutes. But if you give me a few minutes to open the register, I can help you. At this point, entitled customer was very agitated and was giving me the death glare. Right then, my son's bus pulled up and I got him on the bus and on his way to school uneventfully. At this point, I had the option to just leave and not have to run into this customer again but I did need some milk and felt bad I left my awesome manager to deal with this lady. I re-enter the store and this woman is screeching at awesome manager about the prices of the products she was purchasing and my poor manager cast a little shady glare my way and smiled. She rarely lets people like this get to her, but this woman was trying to push her buttons. I go to the dairy case and grab my milk and head to the checkout. As I was approaching, this woman says something I managed to miss hearing and spins around and points at me, accusingly saying, Well, she let me in the store, and I should be waited on if I am here shopping. I don't care what time you people open, and she refused to wait on me at all. I was kind of flabbergasted and said, What? Ma'am, I told you when I let you in the store that we weren't open yet and you said you were fine with that since you were freezing and wanted to get somewhere warm. Entitled customer rolls her eyes at me and says, It doesn't matter. You shouldn't let customers in the store if you can't wait on them. Ma'am, I told you I was not working today and I was just getting my son on the bus. Entitled customer turns to the awesome manager and says, Your employees are so rude and they know nothing about customer service. I think I should get a discount or something just for the bad service. At this point, I had to restrain myself from bursting out into laughter because she was really barking up the wrong tree asking my awesome manager for a discount. My awesome manager tells her, Sorry ma'am, I can't give you a discount because you think you deserve it. I want the number of your corporate office now. You won't have a job when I am done with you. I had a burst of laughter that just slipped out, which my awesome manager shot me a stern look, but started giggling as well. I don't see why you think that is so funny. You both are so rude. Ma'am, you realize this is a local farmer's market and not a big corporate company, right? If you want to speak to the owner, he will be in after 10 a.m. today. I want his phone number now. Um, no. I'm not giving out his private phone number so you can call and harass him the way you harassed our staff. He will be here after 10 today. At this point, the entitled customer turns to me, saying I caused her unneeded stress and she wasn't feeling good now. 
She leaves her groceries on the counter and just walks out in a huff. My awesome manager was not at all mad at me and we actually had a good chuckle about that woman and we told the owner what happened and he even chuckled a bit about it and understood. The following day, I was scheduled to work the opening shift. I got my son on the bus and went inside the market to start opening it up and lo and behold, guess who walks in? I just sighed and continued to do my opening side work. 10 minutes pass and here comes entitled customer to check out. I say a pleasant hello and I mentioned nothing about what happened the previous day and began to ring her up. She smugly is standing there, glaring at me as I am bagging up her groceries. I think you owe me an apology. For what? For the horrible service I was given yesterday. At this point, I am a bit peeved and was just trying to move on from the whole stupid debacle. I apologize that you feel that way, but I wasn't working yesterday. I don't care if you were working or not, but you should know the customer is always right and they should have trained you better. I've worked here over five years with no complaints, ever. Well, that is your opinion, ma'am, and you are welcome to have your own opinion. You don't have the right to talk to me like that. Who the heck do you think you are? At this point, the owner walked into the market and immediately came over to defuse the situation. Is there a problem I can help you out with, ma'am? Who are you? I am the owner, ma'am. This woman has been so rude to me the last two times I have been here, and I would like a discount for my groceries because she stressed me out so badly. Owner playing along. I'm sorry, ma'am. What did she do that was so rude? He knew exactly what was going on here because Awesome Manager told him beforehand. She goes on and on about how Awesome Manager and I were laughing at her yesterday and that we refused service to her. Oh, yes, that's right. I remember our other opening manager was telling me about this. He proceeds to relieve me of my register and starts putting her groceries back in the shopping basket. What are you doing? Ma'am, we appreciate your past patronage to our store, but you are no longer welcome in the market. I would like you to leave. Entitled customer loses all composure at this point. What the heck? kind of a place is this, where the employees can treat the customers so badly and get away with it. We are the kind of place that supports our employees against unruly customers and people who think they are better than everyone else. Now, I would like you to leave before I call law enforcement. Entitled customer walks out and was never heard from again. She got butthurt just because we weren't discounting anything for her. Unfortunately, this is almost an everyday occurrence because of the variety of entitled people we have coming into the market. I should probably start posting some more of these stories on a weekly basis. Update. I think this woman is just a glutton for punishment. This just happened yesterday. The same entitled customer I found out is a member of our bird seed club we run at the farm for people who have feathered pets, chickens, or they like to feed the wild birds. This woman has not stepped foot into the market since the last encounter, but she still gets her seed orders from us. Oh joy. Well, recently I started working more in our warehouse area at the back of the farm. You can see where this is going. I was in the middle of packing an order up and in walks entitled customer. Now for clarification, we typically do not let random customers just wander through the warehouse since it can get hazardous back there with the forklifts and such. The entitled customer walks in and announces, I have an order I am picking up. And she stopped and stuttered a bit when I spun around startled. Hi, ma'am, can I help you? Using my most sickeningly sweet customer service voice I can muster. Well, I, um, have a seed order I need to pick up. Sure, let me check your invoice. She hands me the paper and it's an order for three 40 pound bags of seed. Let me go get that for you. She sort of did a sound that was a cross between grunting and a wild buffalo taking a turd. Under her breath, she mutters, Let's see how long this takes now. I ignore her and proceed to the back where the seed is stored. I was tempted to just sit back there for 10 minutes just to upset her, but no, I had a busy day ahead of me. I got her seed loaded on the hand truck and proceed to wheel them out to her car. 
At this point, she decided to wait outside the loading bay door with her trunk open. I quickly hauled the bags carefully into her trunk and went to close it. Of course, this isn't over yet. She stops me from closing the trunk and says, That's not the right seed! Are you some kind of imbecile? I was a bit taken back, but not surprised. Ma'am, that is the seed that you were rung up for. No, it isn't. She shrieks at me. It's a totally different product that I buy. I was confused. This is what was on the invoice. I show her the barcode matching and all. Wasn't good enough. Well, it seems you don't know what you are doing, no matter what department you work in, huh? Excuse me? Really ticked at this point and done with this woman. Ma'am, if this is not what you want, fine. I proceeded to unload her car and place bags back on the hand truck, taking the advice of the owner from the last encounter with her. I wheeled the bags back in the warehouse and she decides to follow me in. Ma'am, only contractors and employees are allowed back here. Well, since you can't seem to do your job, I have to do it for you. She proceeds to speed walk past me into our storage area and I have had enough. I called down to the store and asked for manager assistance to the warehouse. The owner, who dealt with her before, shows up in two minutes and asks, What's up? I pointed out the entitled customer trying to scale the piles of bags of seeds and trying to find the brand she buys. Owner looks over, rolls his eyes and bellows. Lady, what the heck are you doing? Get down from there before you break something. He was upset. Entitled customer was startled. Ow! I am just trying to find my order since your employee has no clue what she is doing and she is very rude. Looking at the owner, he shrugs as to say, go for it. My shining moment. Ma'am, I called the owner down here, so he has the full scope of what is happening here. I don't care. Cut her off. Ma'am, here is your invoice, and my owner will be more than happy to refund the money for your order, since we do not have the product you say you ordered. I bet you're just too lazy to look for it. Looking at my owner again for reassurance, he gives me that evil grin that I relish when he is about to burst someone's bubble. Ma'am, as I said, you can get your refund at the register. Trying my best not to instigate the situation further. She turns to the owner at this point and says, Are you going to let your employees speak to customers like that? When my employees have to deal with people like you, I fully expect them to act just like that. You are a very rude and horrible natured person, and as I recall, I have already banned you from the market area, so I guess I need to extend that ban to the rest of the farm and forbid you to ever set foot in my land again. I won't be as pleasant next time, and law enforcement will be involved. The fish face gape on this customer was epic, and she looked like someone just shot her dog or something. It took every fiber of my being to not totally lose it laughing my butt off as he escorted her out of the warehouse and off farm grounds. Next we've got, tell them to stop or I will get you fired. Hey Mr. Reddit, this is something my friend online had happen and she wanted me to put it on here cause you're her favorite YouTuber and mine too. Oh, thank you Pony. So for our cast, we've got the entitled mom, We've got the scared little girl, and we've got me, along with the front lady. I used to volunteer at a fun place for kids and parents in my city, and it was fun. Not saying what it was, for personal reasons. For the most part, all I did was clean up the place, stock a few items upstairs, and make sure people and kids are having fun. It was winter time, and we had a room that was especially made for Christmas. It had a large sleigh inside and wooden reindeer, and a weird fireplace, etc. One fun thing was a couple tubs full of white pom-poms to look like snowballs. Each time I walked past the room, I heard kids scream and laugh as they try to hit their parents with the snowballs. Heck, I even joined them occasionally. So one day I was busy working around one room till I saw a lady and a little girl around seven walking up the stairs. Well, the mom looked like she was stomping up the stairs, dragging her poor kid. 
She didn't look like a Karen to me after reading some Reddit stories of how they are described, but she looked overweight and had very, very short hair. Remember the movie Freaky Friday, when Lindsay Lohan was in her mom's body and had a complete transformation? Yeah, that's her hairstyle. She looked pretty angry, possibly regretting that she brought her kid to a place she'll never want to leave. We suddenly made eye contact and I got nervous. I never dealt with angry parents there, so I didn't know what to do. Her eyes seemed to glow red, and I thought I heard her thoughts saying, There's my prey. She stomped over to me, which probably shook the whole floor, or even building for that matter, till she stopped right in front of me. Note that I'm a volunteer and wore a name tag that said so. Here's where she starts, and trust me, my eyes and nose burned like fire once I felt and sniffed her bad breath. Do you work here? I was a little confused. Um, yes. Those little brats are scaring my little angel. She said this while tugging scared kid out from hiding behind her. Poor thing looked more terrified of her own mother than the kids she was complaining about. Um, I don't... Entitled mom rolls her eyes. Don't just stand there. I paid to have a good time with my child. And I'm not going to have these ingrates ruin my special day. What kids? Entitled mom points at the stairs she came from that led to the bottom floor. Those kids that are in the room with the balls. Oh, I can't tell them to stop because they're having fun with the snowballs. And I wouldn't have been able to because I'm a- Don't give me that. You work here. You have a name tag. She states while poking her fat sausage fingers at my chest which kind of hurt from how hard she jabbed. I was getting more nervous. Ma'am, I can't because I'm a volunteer. I thought I saw steam coming out of her ears the second I said that. I backed away a couple steps, fearing that she might strike at any moment. I don't give a darn what you are. You better tell them to stop screaming or I will get you fired. Scared kid tugs on her hand. Mommy, stop. I want to play in the ghost restore. I couldn't help but feel sorry for scared kid. I did find it cute that she got the grocery word wrong, but entitled mom didn't care about her, only to yell at a trembling girl. Ma'am, I really can't do anything. I I'm not an employee. How dare you talk back to me? Where is your manager? I'm getting you fired now. She grabbed my wrist, and while holding her daughter with her other hand, she started to drag me up to the front desk while I was too scared to try and stop her. Looking back, I should have done something, but I've dealt with so many bullies in my life, I didn't know how to stand up for myself then. Mommy, stop. I want to play in the grocery store. Entitled mom, talking sweetly to her kid, which I didn't even think she could do. Not now, sweetums. Mommy needs to take care of this. We got up to the desk where front lady was busy typing away on the computer till she stopped and looked up after she heard her coming. Her smile quickly faded once she saw a scared girl, an angry woman, and a soon-to-be tearful teen in the clutches of the demon. Can I help you? Entitled mom pushes me to the desk, finally letting go of my wrist. This girl won't do her job, and I want her fired. Front lady looks over to me. OP, are you okay? What happened? Luckily, she was an amazing friend to me, so she knew about my anxiety and how easy I break down from time to time. I told her about what had happened and how Entitled Mom was ordering me to go down and stop some kids from having fun, all the while Entitled Mom was shouting that I was lying and still wants me fired. Front Lady could see that I was close to having a mental breakdown and told me to go upstairs. I did what she said to, but I heard Entitled Mom screaming in the background. <coughs> You're letting her leave? She won't do her job, and you need to fire that ungrateful jerk. Ma'am, please don't use that kind of language in the building. And I can't fire her, nor will we, after the way you forced her to come with you. How dare you! I paid to have fun, and now you all ruined my sweet angel's day. I hope you're happy about it. I want that jerk fired. I didn't hear any more, since I was able to make it up the steps and to another room before I broke down. A lady that runs the volunteering job was in the room across from where I was and came to see if I was okay. I told her what happened and front lady was handling it. She gave me a glass of water and a cupcake since one of the employees had a birthday 
and she brought a whole tray of them for him. I didn't hear what happened since I left early. She thought it would be better for me that I go out the back door instead of going through the lobby. I went back a couple days later and asked front lady about it. She said Entitled Mom wouldn't stop screaming till Front Lady threatened her by calling the police. Entitled Mom didn't like that, so she pulled Scared Kid with her to the door, but not before flipping Front Lady off. They banned her from the place and had a picture of her in the staff room to let anyone know she's not allowed back. Funny enough, Scared Kid did come back later and was with her nicer father, who apologized to me after Scared Kid pointed me out to him and told him what happened. Turns out that Entitled Mom was divorcing him and wanted custody over Scared Kid, so she wanted to bribe Scared Kid by going to the fun place only for the father to hear what had happened from Scared Kid, including how she verbally abuses her from time to time. Her dad got full custody and she played in the grocery store room. Sorry for the long read, but I hope this would be okay. If it gets on YouTube, then I'll let my friend know. She'll be over the moon about it. Well, you can tell her that she rocks and Re-Army fully supports her in the battle against the entitled parents. Let's drop some Re's in the comments to show support for her, my friends. Next, we've got how I ended up with a psycho or entitled psychologist. Buckle up, because here comes another story from my tales from Stockholm. Apologies in advance for formatting. Some much needed background on the situation. While I was living in Sweden for some time, I was labeled the troublemaker of the class because I was the loudest and I was blowing up every single day due to the students in my class. One day, around December I think, I was assigned to be monitored by the school counselor. Now, what do you think of when you think of a school counselor or psychologist? A person that you can get help from and vent about your problems? Nope, not in this case. Umbridge, as I like to describe her, was a psychologist for a military boot camp. All she did was scold me out and gave me nothing but everlasting fear of her. Umbridge at first seemed like a lovely woman. However, after having her for a few weeks, past an earmuff incident, her true colors revealed themselves. There were several incidents, but the one I remember the clearest took place right after winter when it was hot enough to go outside without a coat. Meet the cast. We've got me. The Hitalian who accidentally leaves yarn explosions in her wake. We've got the crazy counselor, Professor Umbridge's real life counterpart. We'll call her Umbridge for the sake of simplicity. And we've got the group of kids. The actual story. It was around late winter, early spring, when I first started to get bad vibes from Umbridge. She had scolded me whenever I got mad at the other kids when they bullied me and wouldn't reprimand the other children for their actions. At that point, I had only thought of her as strict. However, one day I got into an argument with a group of kids. They went over time limit on the swing. Yes, I know, it was a stupid thing, but I was in fourth grade and we can all understand how important swings were back in the day. Hey, I've counted to 60 and it's time for you to get off. The group of kids were like, No, count again, you're counting too fast. I raised my voice. I wasn't. I was keeping track of my time on my watch. Check again. We're not getting off. I'm practically shouting now. It's my turn. Your turn is over. My shouting happened to catch the attention of Umbridge, who was outside on recess duty. She comes over and the following ensues. What happened? It's still our turn on the swing and this kid is telling us to get off. They point at me. That's not true. I was timing them and a minute has already passed. It's my turn. Group of kids, you can stay on the swing. Eliza, you're coming with me at once. I don't care what happened. No, it's my turn. They lied. Come here. Trigger warning up ahead if you want to skip. Umbridge lunged at me and grabbed my wrist so hard it left bruises. I was screaming, crying, pleading with her to let me go, but she didn't. Despite her looking frail, she had an iron grip. I managed to escape and ran to the wall, but she grabbed me again even harder. I dug my heels into the fake grass, but she swept me off my feet and dragged me behind her and up a set of concrete stairs. She threw me into my classroom and locked the door, leaving me locked inside my fourth grade classroom until my jerk teacher came back from recess and found me in there like a caged animal. When my mom came to pick me up, I fell into her arms and sobbed and explained everything while showing her the marks that Umbridge had left behind. Needless to say, 
my parents were irate. They went to my jerk principal and demanded an explanation. As usual, he tried to dance around them for about a month, even suggesting my parents to pump me full of drugs to calm me down, until my parents threatened to sue the school. We never did, but we had jerk principal give umbrage explicit orders not to get anywhere close to me. Fast forward to sixth grade, and I'm just going about my usual business in the hallway when I hear a sharp, Hey, you! from behind me. I freeze instantly, recognizing the voice and glance behind me. At the end of the hallway was Umbridge, waving a bony finger at me. Without thinking, I book it and run while she chased after me. I rushed into the nearest bathroom and locked the door. My coping mechanism at the time was to isolate myself, and I still do it if I get overly frustrated. Not like this, though. I hear several knocks at the door and her shouting, and I was honestly praying that she wasn't going to break the door down. She threatens to get jerk principal involved and leaves. Taking my chances, as soon as I was certain she left, I rushed back to class before anything happened and never saw her again. Today, while I was writing this, I actually got curious and decided to look her up with the name of the school. No joke, I found her LinkedIn profile and she's still at the school. I also found jerk teacher and jerk principal's profiles as well, including the vice principal's. There was a weird exchange in fifth grade where the vice principal and principal switched. I won't say anything for privacy reasons, but I'm still surprised that Umbridge is still at that school. This story was the wake-up call and showed the school wanted one thing and nothing else. Money. It was a business after all, and was barely making the cut. Extra small story about how bad this school was. About once every few months, we had a fancy day where we would all be on our best behaviors and the teachers would act fine and dandy as the school inspectors walked around and interviewed students from each class. However, this school only offered students that would leave glowing reviews. I figured this out after I left, as they had only selected the best behaved ones to get questions. I did try to pull one aside to tell them what was actually going on, but the teachers would always swap me away and they'd continue their tour. Still to this day, just thinking about Umbridge in that school sends shivers down my spine. Thank you for reading, truly, and I hope you have a wonderful day or night. If anyone has questions, I'll be happy to answer most. And our final story of the day. Make me do your work? Fine, if you insist. Hello, Mr. Reddit. I've been watching your videos for a while now, and I love them. Oh, thanks, Genji. English is my first language, and I'm on desktop, but I am exactly 95 pounds of dumb, so I might make a few mistakes. Please point them out to me, and I'll fix them. Now, on to the story. This story takes place in middle school, 8th grade, social studies. At this point in my life, I didn't have many friends. I was shy and not very expressive of my feelings, leading them to bottle up and explode at random times for no apparent reason, and I had the worst emotional quarrel a moody teen can have, a very difficult crisis. It was nearing the end of the trimester for school, and we had a pretty big project for social studies. We had to make a 10-minute video about an assigned country and present it to the class. This would all be fun if I didn't leave out one five-letter word. It was a pretty big group project, and we had to fill out peer review sheets for everyone in our group. Me, being shy and not having very many friends, tried my hardest to get the teacher to let me work alone, to no luck. I got put into a group of five, counting me. There was three nice girls, me, and the worst person to ever be stuck in with for a group project, or jerk. For our project, we got India. Great, a country with a lot of interesting facts, a neat culture, and some good landmarks. Maybe this wouldn't be that bad. Our first task was dividing the workload. I gave myself a good chunk of the workload as I didn't know these people and didn't trust them. In hindsight, I see this wasn't necessary because almost everyone did their fair share. I had to do two 30-second trivia slides, a recent news headline, and video editing. Nice Girl 1 got the culture bit, Nice Girl 2 got the landmarks bit, Nice Girl 3 got script editing and cinematography, and Jerk got a one-minute weather slide. Day 1, project due in four days. Everyone got a good start on things. Most people had written their scripts, and Nice Girl 3 approved them. Everyone was at least ready to film, except Jerk, who hadn't written anything. It's fine. We have three more days after today. We have plenty of time. I kind of understood where he was coming from. We shrugged it off 
as he sat for the entire day watching Fortnite streams on his phone. Typical. It's not that Fortnite is bad or anything, it's just a stereotype at this point, and Jerk fit the mold perfectly. Day 2. Project due in 3 days. Today was another day of filming. We had asked Jerk if he had written his script, to which he said no. We asked him to work on it in class, to which he made the big brain excuse of, I have other work to do. I'll get to it. We leave him be while he watched Fortnite and did nothing for the rest of class. By now, we had only a few more scenes to shoot. We were looking okay. Day 3. Project due in two days. Another day. Another day where Jerk didn't make a script. At this point, we started getting concerned. He said the same old excuses and we got passive aggressively mad at him. He's a jock, so Lord knows none of us had the guts to be genuinely aggressively mad at him. We shot the final scenes and I got an idea. After shooting the scenes, we had one left. Weather. I wrote a script in less than 10 minutes and ran it by Nice Girl 3. She approved it. The following is a dialogue between me and Jerk. Hey, Jerk, I wrote the script for the weather scene. Jerk, not moving a muscle or looking up from Ninja's Fortnite game. Okay. Can you please film? Bell's gonna ring soon. We don't have time. The bell rings in 10 minutes. Okay. So we have plenty of time. Can we please film your scene? I'm busy. He refused to run his scene. I then got an idea. Do you want me to run your scene? Yes. <laughs> Great. We filmed that scene and we were good to go. We used my iPad to film since I was editing and needed the clips. I got all of the scenes edited and we were good to go. Except for the credits slide. At that point, I made a generic, thanks for watching slide and was done with that copy of the video. I saved it to my iPad. Meanwhile, I had to work on the final copy. I made an actual credit slide on that one. I listed all the tasks everyone did, including what Jerk did. As far as I'm concerned, Jerk did three things. Sit on his butt and do nothing. Watch Fortnite instead of working and dragged our group down. I put those things under his name. We were all set. Day 4. Final Workday I come to school with my iPad the fake copy of the movie, and the biggest lust for academic destruction ever. I show the fake copy to the group, and they loved it. Even Jerk was happy with it. Jerk then went to use the restroom. While he was gone, I told my group about my plan. I told them all to give Jerk a poor review on the review sheets, and they all complied, just as eager to screw him over as me. Now for the big day. For the hard workers in the group, it was presentation day. For Jerk, it was doomsday. Presentation day. I submit the real copy of the video to the teacher and ask if we could go first. He agrees and shows ours first. It was going smoothly, right up until the end. Our real credits roll and Jerk's face turns red hot with rage. What the heck, man? He didn't say heck, but I don't want Mr. Reddit to get in trouble. I played dumb. What is it? Why'd you put that stuff under my name? I worked just as hard as you did. Nice Girl 1 says, OP gave himself most of the workload and you did nothing. Nice Girl 2 added, You couldn't even film your own scene, even after we wrote it for you. Nice Girl 3 says, Not only that, but you had plenty of time to do your work. That girl had Mike. I guarantee you she would have dropped it. Jerk doesn't say anything. The teacher says, while trying not to laugh, Okay, okay, just fill out your review sheets and be quiet, please. The next project's about to go. I filled out the review sheet, giving my hardworking group members good grades, and Jerk got squad. Nice Girls did the same and gave me good scores too. We all ended up getting an A on the project, except Jerk, who got an F. Oh, victory, how thou aren't sweet. I'm really proud of this, not just because justice rained on him like a freaking hurricane, but because this served as the first step to me becoming more outgoing with myself, my interests, and becoming a friendlier person in general. School, from that point on, was a lot better, and high school is amazing. I have friends, I'm outgoing, and even got a male lead in the school musical, Pippin. So, in a weird way, I'd like to thank Jerk for being himself. Otherwise, I may not have evolved to the kind of person I am today. Moral of the story, do your own work, and there won't be a problem. Entitled mom tries to get me kicked off JV, so her less than average son can play.
This might be a bit of a long one, so get comfy, grab a snack, or a drink. Also, I'm fairly new to Reddit, and this is my first post here, so there may be some issues with how this is formatted and such. First, let's meet our incredible cast. We've got me, we've got the entitled mom, the entitled kid, the coach, teammate one, and teammate two. So, some context. I play high school level hockey for a club team, not far from where I live. I have two seasons, and at the time of this writing, almost three seasons with this club. So I have friends here, and I know the coaches pretty well. I've been playing on our JV2 team for the past two seasons, and our 2 team very rarely wins games, so when I learned I made our JV1 team, I was super happy. Now, on to the story. So it's tryouts for spring season, and in the locker room talking with all of my friends, joking about who is going to make what team and other BS like that. In comes this kid I have never seen before, and while it's standard for new players to come in, this kid seemed a bit off. He was wearing expensive clothes and was suddenly bragging how he was going to make JV1. This is again pretty normal, everyone says they're going to make JV1. So tryouts start, and the way my club does it is by scrimmaging a few times. Well, this kid, entitled son, is not absolutely horrible, but he is far from good. His shot is not up to high school level, which is actually pretty hard. He is a decent skater, little uncomfortable on the ice, but barely noticeable. But overall, just not JV1 material. During, I think it was the second tryout session, I see someone try and get up to where the coaches are sitting, and that my coach is repeatedly having to shoo away. I initially brushed this off as some parent trying to figure out how this club works. By now, tryouts are over, and everyone is waiting until the rosters are released. Fast forward a couple of weeks to the first practice of the season, and by now, everyone knows who is on which team, and I figured out that Entitled Son is on JV2, which is good, because now he has a place to get better and learn how to improve and such. As me and the boys are waiting to get on the ice, Entitled Son joins us and I notice and bring it up. Here is the ensuing conversation we had. Hey, Entitled Kid, aren't you on JV White? Which is JV2. No, Entitled Mom said I was on JV Blue. JV1. Well, my brother said he saw your number on the White roster. Well, Entitled Mom said I was on Blue. And plus, I'm probably better than you anyway. Well, if you say so, kid. So I decide to go get my coach to see if Entitled Kid is just joining us for practice, which is completely normal, or if he is on our team. Hey coach, is Entitled Kid joining us for practice? No. Okay, well, then why is he here? What? Entitled Son is here, and he's saying that he's on blue. That's wrong, I put him on white. You might want to go tell him that. By now, everyone is on the ice and skating around. My coach and I get on the ice, and I join the flow of group and skating with some of my teammates. I noticed that coach had pulled Entitled Kid aside and was talking to him. I then noticed something up in the stands. It was, of course, Entitled Mom. The same lady who is trying to get to where coaches were sitting during the tryouts. I realize what's happening and start dreading it. This is my first encounter with an Entitled Parent. So coach ends up sending Entitled Kid off the ice and Entitled Mom is coming down to the door to figure out what happened. They talk for a few minutes and at one point I see Entitled Son point to me. I take this as another warning sign of what's about to happen. Next time coach skates by that side of the ice, Entitled Mom pulls him aside. For the record, my coach is a pretty nice guy, serious on the ice and jokes around with us in the locker room. Maybe only once have I ever seen him lose his cool. So I just happened to be near the door where my coach and Entitled Mom are talking, and here is what I was able to hear. Why is Entitled Son not allowed to skate? This is JV Blue practice. Entitled Son is on JV White. Well, Entitled Kid deserves to be on Blue. Ma'am, your son has a lot of improvement to make before he can play on Blue. Are you kidding? My son is easily one of the best players out here, and he says one of your players said mean things to him when he showed up, and my son would never lie. Do you know who said it? Entitled Kid points to me. Coach waves me to come over. Uh, yeah, Coach? Did you say mean things to Entitled Kid? No, I just asked him what he was doing here, because my brother told me he was on white. Entitled Kid, is this true? 
No. Well, ma'am, your son just lied to you. Meme over here has been playing here for two seasons with this one being his third, and he would never berate another player or teammate unless he was messing around. Entitled mom and entitled kid. That's BS. Also, entitled kid said stuff on how I was a bad player and he was the best out here. Probably cause he is right. And you are horse crap, meme. Don't talk to my player that way. Teammate one and teammate two hear what's going on and skate over. Teammate one. Hate to break it to you, lady, but your son is not close to Meme in on-ice skill. Teammate 2. Yeah, Meme is actually one of our better players. An entitled kid can't skate that well. Well, you two idiots are lying. Yeah, you guys are all crap as well. Talk like that to my players again and I will bench you. Here, I have an idea. How about me and entitled kid, 1v1. First of five goals wins. Okay, have fun losing then. Teammate 1 and Teammate 2 are both laughing at her statement. I can't blame them. Okay, I'll kick your butt. So me and Entitled Son proceed to 1v1 and I utterly crushed him. I kept dangling around him like he was one of those trainers that you use as a kid. And anytime he tries to get around me, I just use my body and force him off the puck. All of this is happening while both my team and one of our varsity teams is watching. Both teams are laughing. After this, Entitled Mom is furious and calls me and my coach back over. Entitled Mom decides to ignore the blatant evidence that Entitled Kid doesn't belong on JV1 and goes straight to yelling. I demand that Entitled Kid be put on JV1 and that meme be removed from the club. Yeah, that ain't happening. Your son lost fair and square. Now leave and come back for practice on Wednesday. It was just a fluke that he lost. Now, if you don't put him, ma'am, leave, or I will remove you from the program. At this point, Entitled Kid decides it's a great idea while we are arguing to take a vicious slash at my legs with his stick. Yo, what the heck? You deserved it, you little jerk. Also, now is when my team decides to come help me out by coming over and restraining Entitled Son. I will be contacting the league about your behavior as well as your son's. I will also be having you removed and banned from the club. Now leave or I'm calling the cops. She then sees the mass of players around the boards and finally takes her son and leaves. I was okay, but my leg was sore for a few days. My teammates are also legends. Next we've got Crazy Entitled Sister gets me riled up and then tries to call the cops on me. First of all, I just wanted to say that I love watching your videos. Oh, thanks Jess. All the entitled parents in the world make me cringe like no tomorrow, and the pro-revenge people get on others is absolutely delicious. This is more of an entitled sister story, not really an entitled parent story. So for a bit of context, I have Asperger's syndrome, which is a high-functioning form of autism, and one major con of having it is that I get overstimulated and riled up when dealing with high confrontation situations. I moved in with my older sister and her husband after leaving my abusive dad's place since I chose to stay with her and my mom. And at first I alternated between her and my mom's place. My sister had a small apartment and a few weeks after I moved in with them, she moves her husband's entire family. Her mother-in-law, her stepfather-in-law, their two children, a 16-year-old girl and a 15-year-old boy. During the time I was living with my sister, she apparently required that our mom paid $25 to $30 a month just for me to live there. Talk about doing this out of the kindness of their own hearts. And where I live, Colorado, has some gray areas when it comes to residency. If you are not a tenant, but your property is at the apartment of somebody else, and you've been staying there for over 30 days, you cannot be thrown out of there without the leaseholder going to the courthouse and filing for an eviction, which is obviously something that my sister never bothered to do. This particular incident happened about a month after my brother-in-law's family moves out, about two years ago. Cast. We've got me. We've got good mom. We've got entitled sister. We've got brother-in-law and brother-in-law's sister. I got home from mom's place that evening after the whole day consisted of her and entitled sister's constant bickering through the phone. As I sat down on the couch to relax, entitled sister started coming at me to confront me about mom. Hey, OP, you haven't talked to me lately. I feel like we're not getting along with each other anymore. Talk to me. She then started to press me on and on about mom. 
If I'm not mistaken, I said something along the lines of, Entitled sister, you are really starting to get on my nerves. You just want me out of your house. You know that's not how you feel. That's just how mom feels. Stop lying to yourself. Knowing Entitled Sister and I have never gotten along growing up, her being the troublemaker, and I had to get my butt chewed because of her, I knew this was going to end badly. No, Entitled Sister, it is how I'm feeling though. You know you don't feel the same way. Talk to me. Entitled Sister went on and on about how Mom wanted her children only as friends and that she didn't care about us. I screamed at the top of my lungs for her to stop because she was already starting to rile me up. At this point, she had already threatened to call the cops on me if I didn't leave her place. Brother-in-law's sister was listening to the entire confrontation but not saying anything. However, brother-in-law put his two cents into this. Go live with your freaking tweaker mother. I got up to leave the apartment to calm myself down, which entitled sister attempted to block the door. I tried to get her out of my way, to which she had threatened to call the police before this because I put my hands on her, which we both knew wasn't true. I managed to get out and called mom. The phone conversation. Mom, I don't know what to do. Entitled sister threatened to call the cops on me if I didn't leave her house. My mom. Just try to calm down, OP. Entitled sister isn't going to get very far with the cops. Then I overheard Entitled Sister on the phone with 911 giving our location. I start to panic because I didn't know what to do. I'm in tears, freaking out. Mom, Entitled Sister is already on the phone with the police. Mom is upset that Entitled Sister is doing this. Hang tight, I'll get the cops on the phone now. I walked out of the complex to her place after about three minutes of waiting for her to call the police. When she finally called back, Mom, I'm on my way to your place. Why aren't you over there? Entitled sister and brother-in-law kicked me out. Get back there, now, so you can talk to the police when they get there. I headed back to the complex, and when the police arrived, Entitled sister and I both explained our sides of the incident. When the police officer explained to her that she could not evict me without filing for an eviction, she was mad. She had that facial expression that said, How dare you not press charges against OP for not leaving my house? The police officer told me to go back to the apartment. No charges would be filed against me or her and to just try to ignore each other for the rest of the night. I overheard Entitled Sister on a phone conversation with our elder sister that night saying, Please sis, I have no one. I tried to call the cops on OP for not leaving my house, but they let her back in. Sorry for the parent in the story not being entitled. I just wanted to share about how my sister thought she could get me out of her house by trying to press charges against me. Edit. Mr. Reddit, if you would like, you have my permission to read this story on your YouTube channel. Next up we've got, Entitled Brother is upset that he doesn't get $200. Hello there, Re-Army. This is a pretty recent story, and yeah, I know that you mostly don't do this sort of thing, but my brother is a parent. It's just that his son, who has done nothing wrong, isn't in this story. This story barely even involves me. I'm just a rather big fly hanging on the wall of these conversations. English is my first language, and I plan on going to school for my BA in English, so please be sure to let me know where I mess up in this story. Cast. We've got me, your narrator. We've got Miss L, my mother. And Chris, my older brother. Sorry, but his name isn't Kevin, or whatever a male Karen would be. Backstory. I am the second oldest of four children. I have two younger brothers. Then there's me, who is living at home and is trying to build up my life so I can eventually move out. And at the top of this food chain, more like the bottom, is Chris. Chris, for a lack of better words, is a sociopath. He lacks empathy for others, cares only for his own wants and desires, fries his own brain, and takes advantage of my mother, who at this point is a saint. He's a wannabe gangster who's gotten locked up a couple of times, claims to be part of some gang, and is always trying to scam and scheme his way through life. When things get hot, he always crawls back home and continues to act however he wants, and when he's done bleeding my mother dry, he scoops up and leaves, but rarely for long. He always comes back like a bad case of pink eye. The actual story. It was a typical day, just before the full-blown force of the Georgia spring heat struck us like a baseball bat. I was fiddling with my laptop, as were my younger brothers, 
and Chris was belting at the top of his voice on the phone over something. You'd think I'd know with how loud he is, but I did my best to ignore him. My mom came back with groceries and we started to bring them in and put them away. Cue Chris, who only brought in a few bags and didn't help after that. Hey, can I get $200? Uh, excuse me? I need 200 so me and X can go to blank. I forgot who he was going with and where. Is he being serious right now? No. What? Come on, I need it. Chris, I'm not giving you $200. But I need it. How am I going to get to blank? That's your problem, not mine. If you need to get there so bad, then hitch a ride with one of your friends. And stop being a leech. Man, can't even give me $200. It's a one-way trip. Man, nobody ever wants to help me. He just kept mumbling and whining about this for another couple of minutes, and my mom would not have it. She grabbed her beer and began to hang out with my aunt and decided not to deal with his moaning and groaning. Now, if the story ended there, I wouldn't bother writing up to this point, let alone posting it. Fast forward a day or two, and my mom comes back late from her afternoon shift, and she starts ranting. I asked what had her fuming, and she replied. Chris called me while I was flubbing work and asked for a ride. Keep in mind that my mom has to use Uber or ask my aunt for a ride to work usually. I couldn't believe him. He went all the way out there to the blank. Apparently didn't have a ride back and didn't have a plan for a ride back when he asked me for $200 and was banking off of me to pick him up. I told him, no, I'm working, you dumb donkey, and hung up and turned my phone off. I wasn't too surprised. This seemed like something he'd do to try and force her into picking him up from wherever on earth he was. I also knew it wouldn't be long before he slithered back home, which he did by the following morning. And our final story of the day. It's your fault that I didn't get into the advanced class. Hello, this is my first time posting on Reddit, so hopefully I'm doing this right. I'm not sure if it really falls under the category of entitled parents, as neither of the parents make an appearance in this story. It's all about their entitled kid. But I didn't know where else to post it. It could also fall into a little petty revenge. Anyways, this is going to be really long, so please bear with me. The cast of today's drama will be... Me. We've got the entitled kid. We've got my drama class. We've got my mom and my dad. To set this scene, I've been friends with entitled kids since my last year of middle school when we moved to my city and we happened to sit next to each other on the bus. As we lived in the same neighborhood, our moms came up with a plan that one week his mom would drive us both to school and next week my mom would. And they went back and forth. Now, Entitled Kid is literally the most entitled person I've ever met. His mother heavily coddled him and would endlessly praise him for anything he did, leading to him getting a swollen head and thinking he was just God's gift to all of us plebes. To give a good review of his personality, we always got to school very early since we were car riders, so we were always there to hear the 8 a.m. warning bell. Classes start at 8.30 a.m. in high school, and he came up with what he called 8 o'clock insults, where he would just insult everyone around him when hearing the bell going off. Anyway, because of the arrangements with our moms driving us to school, I stayed friends with him all through high school until the middle of senior year, where our story finally starts. My birthday was coming up in a few weeks, and although I hadn't extended to invite him this year due to his behavior in previous years, I felt bad inviting everyone at our lunch table but him, so I invited him anyways. I made a half-joking comment to him to, please don't behave the way that you did last year, a whole nother story, and he went off. He stood up in the middle of the lunchroom and started screaming at me that he couldn't believe that I brought that up and that I should leave the past in the past, and a couple other choice words that I won't mention here. Well, this was the last straw for me. I had dealt with being mistreated by this kid for five years, and I was done. So I did something rather petty instead of taking the high road like I probably should have. Not my proudest moment, but it sure felt good. For the past four years, I had listened to this kid talk poorly about all of our friends behind their backs. So I went and told every single person exactly what he had said about them. Now, most of these kids were mutual friends from our drama class. We had been in the same drama class for three years, but in senior year, the teacher had to pick students she thought were doing well to be in the advanced class. I got in, he did not. 
so he had a lot of mean things to say about most of the drama class. Obviously, none of them were pleased to learn what he was saying about them. One girl in particular he had bullied really badly in the past, and he was going around saying that she bullied him, so she was absolutely livid. Long story short, basically the entire drama class started giving him the cold shoulder, and his little entitled narcissistic ego did not take this well. He completely freaked out, yelling and cursing at me and calling me every name in the book. He even threatened to take the entire class to the principal's office and he was saying that the whole drama class conspired to make sure he wasn't accepted into the advanced class. I was seen red. That day I went home and asked my mom if I could punch him. I really wanted to and as I happened to be a black belt in Taekwondo, I would have been able to do some damage. See, I didn't really care if I got in trouble with the school as long as I knew I wouldn't get in trouble at home. She told me to ask my dad, who unfortunately said no, so I held myself back. Nothing ever happened with the principal. I'm not sure if he was just bluffing or if the principal took one look at his case and sent him away. Unfortunately, there is no real climactic ending to this story other than the fact that the event completely destroyed our friendship and I know for a fact that I'm not the only friend he lost by the end of this. For the rest of the senior year, we refused to speak to each other and just generally didn't like each other. I do wish I had kept the line messages that most of this happened over. They were intense, and I kick myself for not saving them every time I think about this story. I was just so mad that I wanted them gone and deleted them. I will add that about a year after we graduated, we ended up meeting again in a restaurant he was serving at and kind of made up, so neither of us are necessarily angry at each other anymore. But we will never be friends again. We're civil. But it has become a great story to tell, and I have plenty more stories where that came from. And shoutouts to our regenerals of the day will be AFK, Moonblood, and No Clan Zero. Become tomorrow's regenerals by leaving as many re's as you can in the comments below.